What's up? What's up? Welcome tonight to the Gimmick Table with your hosts, Boogaloo and Lowrider. What's up, Chunk? What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? Hey, we want to give a shout out to Cicada for our awesome music and that awesome video you saw. Uh, give a shout out to Cicada Band. They do all the music for all the MWA shows. Um, hey, I'm going to start by paying some bills. Let's start by doing that, all right? Uh, first up is sleeps.com. Tampa, let's do it. All right, let's do it. I got you. Sleeves.com. Sleeves offers great quality products from arm sleeves, knee sleeves, headbands, tights, joggers, socks, even dirty boxers. If you or someone in your life is an athlete, then you need to check out Sleeves.com. Use the promo code MWA Pod and get your 10% discount. Sean, let me tell you, I want to thank you again for uh, or getting me a new pair of boxes for my birthday this past weekend. I was on vacation this weekend in Ebor City, and guess what I did? I warmed to the pool, but, you know, with all that rain going on, there was no action. <laughs> all right. What we got next? <laughs> well, you know what, man? At least you tried. All right. I'm going to give a shout-out to HealthVape.com. HealthVape sells healthy vaping alternatives. All their products have no nicotine, no harmful or addictive chemicals, and they are vitamin infused. So make sure to pick yourself up some of their vape and pod products using our code MWA Pod for a 10% discount. Also, we got the Wrestling Universe. The Wrestling Universe is your one stop shop for all your wrestling merchandise. They have all kinds of WWE, TNA, slash Impact, UFC. WCW, ECW action figures, past and present. They carry T-shirts, wrestling cards, autograph 8x10s, lucha masks, belts, and much more. They also have in-store signings with some of the biggest names in the industry today. The signings are going on weekly, on a weekly basis. Every weekend he has a signing. So if you're in the New York or tri-state area, you might want to do yourself a favor and check it out. And just so you know, all autographs, Items come with certificate of authenticity, and they also ship internationally. Check out wrestlinguniverse.com. Hey, who's you got coming up? I know you got a cool few yeah, people yeah. coming I up got, right now. Yeah, yeah, he has July 18th. He has Greg the Hammer Valentine and Wildfire Tommy Rich. Then July 24th, he has Eric Rowan and Rod Simmons. And on uh -huh. few, he got future dates in August with Mickey James, Darby Allen. Moose, Josh Alexander, Johnny Swinger, and September, Kurt Angle's coming into the wrestling universe. Wow, Kurt Also, Angle. in September, he has RVD with his lady, Katie Forbes. She's going oh, to awesome. be twerking in the store. And on October, <laughs> Mick Foley. Yes, Cactus Jack, Mankind, Do Love. I don't know who's going to show up, but they'll be there. That's awesome, man. That is awesome. Uh, and if you really like our show, guys, make sure y'all subscribe. And um, we check out some of the other shows that are on our network. We have shows like Killing the Business with uh, ECW Original, The Kingpin Angel, King Mega, and uh, the, the Crisco Kid, Glenn Sexton. We also got Shooting the Shit Uncensored with the Ozzy podcast machine, Pierce Austin. Just got to be on the lookout for that because you never know when he's going to drop an episode. And, uh, of course, we can't forget, last but not least, Get Funked with Alan Kiwi Funk. He's, uh, he's been doing great things. He's always got some great WCW stars taking me back to my childhood of being a fan of WCW, you know. So, hey, guys, make sure y'all tune in. Check yeah. out their shows. Like them. Subscribe, subscribe them. Follow us, yeah. us, you know. Twitch.tv backslash NWA world and at YouTube.com, Multicontinental Wrestling Alliance. There you yeah. go, right down there. All right, down there. <laughs> All right, guys. With, we, with, that uh, being said, with that being said, you know what time it is. All oh, hell, the nights of the gimmick table, where the truth gets spit at the infamous round table and your feelings get left at the door. I am Boogaloo, this is Lowrider, and welcome to Knights of the Gimmick Table, ladies and gentlemen. What's up, y'all? And thank y'all for tuning in. Just so y'all know, this guy right here, he's making his return on our show because everybody was asking. They were wanting to know when is he going to be back. Enough. And, and they want to know. And they want to know. They really want to know what's he going to say. 
today. The Mass Maniac Part Two. What's up, Frank Goodman? Hey, How's everybody? Your, let me start the show by saying, "How's your penis?" It's still broken. Oh, you know, I, I was hoping you, I was hoping you had good news for us. No, I mean it's you know I got a broken penis. What can I tell you? <laughs> you know, I, I listen. If I, I would love to have a great story, like yeah, I got in this fight and I got punched in the penis. But I mean, the fact of the matter is, it was I had a botched shoulder surgery, and my blood pressure got too high, and you broke and the penis. My body just. Um, I forget what the word was that they used. Your body's rejecting your oh, penis. Oh, the trauma. My my body went into trauma. <laughs> and the next uh, the next day I it's like this, you know. What can I tell you? So I get big needles. Alan, Alan Funk, what's up, brother? You know? I've come to grips with it. It is hey. what it is, you know. Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. But I will tell you, let me let me tell you. The coolest thing about it is it got me into not wearing underwear. Oh man. Hey, you know, oh, I so you're just too. going around commando now. Yeah, I, I wish I would have Rolling done this out 20 years ago. That's what I, I normally answer the door like that when Jehovah's Witness knock on my door. I'm like, what right. do you want? And I just wear a t-shirt and no, just no underwear. You answer your door? Yeah, I want them to see. I, I <laughs> There's absolutely nobody I want to come knocking at my door. Really, I just opened the blinds. I just opened yeah, the blinds I, up I, to I my waist. I don't my door. I because my front window's there, so I open the blinds have only up to my waist, and they see me naked there. I'm like, "What do you want?" Yeah, no, I don't, I'm not opening my door for anybody. There, there is absolutely nobody in the world that can knock on my door that I would give two poops about. You know? Oh man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Just really not. You know, we got so Pierce we got? Austin. We we got we got Pierce Austin in the building. We got Alan Funk in the building. Cool. We got King Mega in the building. Everybody, I, I want to actually, yeah, I want to say something about King Mega. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, so you know, all the years I've run, I don't know, I, I've promoted like what eight eight hundred and something shows, and pretty much everybody in the wrestling business at some point has worked for me at some point. Yeah. Mega is the one guy except that for I, Mega. Oh, well, I don't know. He he may say that. No, he, he may never, have worked never worked for you. I don't no. know. No, he said, he said he's he never said, gotten down. He said he's the only New York guy never to work for you. <laughs> but let me tell you something. He's the one guy I regret not working for me. Because I always wanted to do something really, really cool with him. And I just don't know why it never happened. You know? Well, I mean, anytime I met him, I think we were always, like, cordial and stuff. Well, good, good news for you, Frank. He lives in Florida. Does he really live in Florida? Yes, he lives in the Tampa area. Does he so, really? Yeah, he will. He'll be. He will be willing to work for you. Well, that's awful nice. Will he be willing to sell tickets? No, I'm just kidding. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, I, I listen. I stopped asking guys to sell tickets years ago. No, uh, when we come back, when we come back to run our shows, one hundred percent, I would put Mega on the shows. I like him. He's a good. He's probably one of the best big men in the business, like legit big men. Yeah, I've al always, always, always liked him, and you know Shane Wayne at yeah. uh, NYWC. Yeah, he he yeah. always said to me, Frank, why don't you use Mega? And I would always say to Shane because anytime I used somebody from NYWC, Shane would actually get them for me. Right, and. Shane would, I, you know, he'd always say, "Hey, you want to use Mega?" And I'm like, "Yeah, of course. He's he's gigantic," and he would just never mention it again because Shane is so he's the best guy in the world. Oh yeah, Shane's awesome. You know, you can never say anything bad about Shane, but he's he's uh, he's he's so fast. Yeah, you know, you can have a stroke trying to keep a conversation with he's him. Like, he's like on Ritalin. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. My two regrets, not using Mega and not doing more with Tim Arson. Tim was, Tim was, uh, he was a heat getter, man. He could get, Tim, he knew how to get heat, man. Tim could, Tim really could work, but it was just so annoying. The, why don't you do this with me? Why don't you do that? I'm better than this guy. I'm better than that one. And looking back on it, uh, Tim may have been right. But you just don't want to listen to it all the time. But I no. love Tim. I, I I should have done more with Tim Arson. Yeah, you know, definitely. 
Yeah. So, definitely do. so Frank, um, Pierce Austin, he's also on this. He's the ones that runs NWA, but he's a fellow Australian. Just oh, like your wife. Yeah, he's in Sydney. He lives in Sydney. Really? Yeah. Uh, did we ever meet there? Because, you know, when, when I was living there, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He. I don't think he's ever met you, but he he knows the legend of you. Oh, that's cool. I appreciate it. when when I was in when I was living in Sydney. Um, a lot of local promoters in Sydney, and I'm sorry, Pierce. Is it? Yeah, Pierce. I'm sorry if I don't remember the names of the promoters. Yeah, These guys used to come to me every day, and they're like, "Hey, you know, we want to coach. We want you to co-promote a show with us," and. Every time one of these guys would would ask me to come to their show, they got 15 people in the audience. And I just couldn't do it because it's so expensive to bring talent over. Right. So I went to an amusement park called Wonderland. Pierce will tell you about it. At the time, this was like the Disney World of Sydney. And, you know, it's since closed down and, and, and went down the hill. But my wife and I, we met with the heads of Wonderland and they agreed to do a mega wrestling tour. We were going to do like 24 shows in 12 days. And this was going to be a sold show. So and would it have been, would it have been like what the shows that they do in the UK and London, like the, the, like the resort shows and stuff? Well, yes, yes. Okay. But this was going to be what's called a sold show and a sold show Lou, for those of you who don't know, um, the venue pays for the whole show. Like the venue will pay, I'll make an imaginary figure. The venue will pay a hundred thousand dollars for 24 shows out of that hundred thousand dollars. I, I have to budget that show where of course I can make enough money to make it worthwhile. So I budgeted this really cool string of shows i had everybody set for it uh, it was going to be snooker bundy bigelow um it's hard to remember probably like valentine and all those guys and this was back in the early 90s and it was going to be something like a hundred thousand i probably would have came away with like twenty thousand bucks and i made the mistake of telling somebody I don't remember who it was. And they told somebody else who went in there, got all the guys I was going to use, booked a show down there, and it bombed. It bombed big time. You know, I mean, they had, I, I, they may have brought the metal, uh, Jeff Miller, the metal maniac there, and they overpaid the wrestlers so much that they had Brother. no chance of making any money, you know. Yeah. And that they was were it. willing to bring in him to Australia. You know, it wasn't. Oh yeah, the because you, you were, at the time, <laughs> at that point, you were looking at twenty five hundred for a coach seat back in the early nineties. Wow. Yeah, but wow. I, I I always wanted to do something in Australia, but well, when you're talking about a couple, Australia is like a hot hotbed right now. Well, not right now because they're on lockdown again. No, yeah, but no, for, for wrestling, again. for wrestling, it's a it's a hotbed. Oh I yeah. Mean, well, well you, you know, one of the great things about it is, and I'm sure Pierce will tell you, gambling is legal in Sydney, okay. and they have clubs, and you go to these clubs and you have dinner and you you play slot machines, but they have little ballrooms where you can run wrestling shows, oh, almost like the VFW halls here. Yeah, but because it's a gambling thing, it, it you could make a fortune there. But again, the problem is you have promoters in Sydney and in Australia, Melbourne, that are flying in. I'm not going to say the names of the wrestlers, but they're flying in indie guys who have a marginal name. And you know, of course, you bring somebody to Australia. You know, you're paying an indie guy three thousand dollars to come down for a week. With airfare, you're looking at twenty five. You're looking at probably a total of six thousand dollars to bring one guy in. Wow! And it's a guy that won't draw any more than ten more people. Yeah. And that ruins the market. It burns the city. You know, it yeah. burns the city. Yeah. He's, uh, Pierce said that uh, next time you're in Sydney, 
you can meet up with him and uh, grab some beers, but I think he means piss, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't drink, but I appreciate it. When, once the um, once the uh, the virus is really over and, and and traveling is comfortable, I go down for a month every year. So yeah, definitely. All right, definitely near Campbelltown. We, we, we can try and link. We can try. That's and where that's where your wife is from Sydney, Frank. My wife is from Sydney. Um, for those who don't know, I don't know if you know, Lou. My wife is actually um, a Polynesian Japanese. So my wife's an Asian Polynesian. Oh, wow. And her dad was a uh, pearl diver in a place called Thursday Island. So, um, you know, it, it's, very, it's very, very Polynesian in Australia. Everybody thinks everybody has blonde hair and blue eyes, and that's not what it really is. Yeah. Pierce says that's about 40 minutes from him. Yeah, I bet Pierce knows who my niece is. Uh, you know, Pierce, my niece is Starly. I don't know if you guys know. Do you know who you know who my niece is? No. If you look no. her up online, she um, she's a huge pop singer currently. Okay. She had a big song with a, a call on me was the name of her song. So if you look her up, Starly, Starly Sorry. Hope, he'll know who she is because she's pretty yeah, famous. He said he knows her. He yeah. <laughs> She's pretty famous and stuff. Awesome, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hey, so um, we want to do something different with you today. Sure. Uh, we want to, because you've had, you've ran so many shows and so many interesting people come to your doors and wrestled in your rings. Uh, we would like to ask you, like, we'll, we'll, we'll drop a name and you tell us uh, what, what you did really think of them. All right. I, know, I know you pull no punches. Not really. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's go with uh, how about um, Balls Mahoney? Oh, I love Balls. Yeah, I balls. did. I mean, you know, Balls Mahoney was technically one of the best wrestlers around. Did you guys know it? Oh yeah, he could. Balls he was, was Balls was a real collegiate wrestler. Um, you guys witnessed what other people don't. Balls could go sixty minutes, mm -hmm. and he could chain wrestle with anybody. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever, ever. Bulls worked for me maybe 300 times. Never a drug issue, never in anything until he left WWE. Okay. When, he, that... left, when he left WWE, um, John had a very, very hard time. Yeah. And we had our, in the 300 shows he worked for me, we had our only issue. Was that when, the hotel thing down here? Yes. He, he, I never, ever, ever get hotels for wrestlers because of things like this. Uh, he took a girl to a hotel, and in blood, he wrote their names on the wall. Is that the, that was the thing where like the room was covered in shit and yes. blood? Yep. Absolutely. And I, and I had to pay for it. And... Um, that's you know, crazy. he apologized uh, some time later, and I told Angel that story, right? And Angel goes, he goes, it doesn't surprise me. He was into, he goes, he was always into that bullshit. He was no, he goes, if he goes, if Goodman would have known, that's he was famous for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I one thing with me is everybody used to say, Frank, how do, how could you afford having fifteen famous guys on your shows? Well, the first thing was I would never buy anybody a hotel room or an airline ticket. Because anytime I bought them an airline ticket, I got burned. So once I got burned a couple times, I would just give tell the wrestlers, hey, look, I'm going to give you a little extra money. Mm -hmm. You get your own hotel. You get your own airline ticket. And, right. you know, John didn't have a credit card. And right. I, I've crazy. known him for, you know, 18, 19 years at the time. I, and that was it. You know, I, I know he was great time, time too. And I knew he, he took a turn for the worst. One day I'm I'm working on Jewel Avenue. I'm, I'm coming down with the bus and I pull it to the first stop. And he don't even live out uh, on uh, uh, Casino Boulevard and Jewel Avenue. He does right. not live there. He was standing he was standing in the bus stop there smoking a cigar. I go, what the hell are you doing there? He goes, oh, I'm just just hanging out. You know, that's a bad area, the Pominar Projects. I know it. I and know Pominar like, like, well. I, went, like, listen, I, I grew up on Maine and Jewel. Right, so you know, you know, so I'm like, I'm like, what the hell? Yeah. And then and, uh, a he, couple, yeah, a, a couple months later, I'm at a show with him in Philly. It's one of them ECW shows, reunion shows, and um, 
I'm on, it was really hot that day and I'm on, I'm on a loading dock. I'm, I'm talking to my wife on the loading dock and I'm like, hey, like I'm off in the corner. He didn't know I was there. I seen him come out with his chair. He unfolded his chair and he like busted something open. It was like a red and he, he made a line and he snorted it right in front of me. And then he saw me, he goes, oh man, he goes, hey, you know, I'm just, I go, listen, man, I don't give a fuck what you do. That's your, that's your life. That's your business. And that was the same day that New Jack attacked them and, and like about stabbed them right before the show started. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's sad with John because I mean, he was, he was the eight time USA pro champion. Mm -hmm. He never, ever missed a booking ever. <clears throat> right. I would pay him in advance. He would always show up, never an issue. And you, you guys know me. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life. I've never had mm -hmm. a drink in my life. I've never taken a drug in my life. That's why I'm in such constant pain. And I watched him count 50 somas and take them at one time. I believe it. Shit. One <laughs> time. You know, people think, and a lot of wrestlers are probably going to get mad at me, but, like, I really care. Yeah. Um, people think all these wrestlers die from cocaine and heroin. They don't. These guys walk around incoherent because they're shoving muscle relaxers down their throat. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people say all the time, and, and I've really never said this before, but, hey, Frank, why did this guy no show? Hey, Frank, why did that guy no show? Hey, Frank, why did this guy no show? And the fact is 90% of the guys who no showed my shows were because – they were stoned out of their minds on, on muscle relaxers or something. <coughs> we had guys that would show up to the building and I couldn't bring them out. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't bring them out because they were sleeping face first Yep, I mean, in, we, on a table in the locker we, room. We had an incident at one of your shows on the beach. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Well, I don't know why you're keeping it quiet. I'll, Missy say Hyatt. It. I'll say it. Missy and Tammy were face first in the sand Oh, unconscious yep. i for those who don't know i used to run i used to live on the beach and i used to run wrestling shows on the beach i ran like four or five of them and i used to do it just for the kids in the community they were free shows i didn't charge anybody i made money off the video of course right. and um they were great show we had all these famous yeah. people on the yeah, show good times on them yeah shows. and missy hyatt and tammy were unconscious face first on the sand. Missy to this day won't talk to me only because I tell the story. What should I do? I should make up and what didn't happen. You know, the ambulance had to come. It happened. You know? <clears throat> yep. Um let me see who else we got. What uh what do you think of uh the the triple threat? Bigelow Candido and Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas. <laughs> okay. Um, for those people who don't know, and I know I keep saying that, um, cause the new generation of wrestler have no clue who I am, which is cool with me. Uh, Bigelow was my best friend. I don't even know if you guys knew that. Yeah. We Scott and I were best friends for, I don't know, since the mid eighties, I met Scott, uh, Paul Heyman, uh, used to come to the, I used to work at a gym when I was a bodybuilder and he used to come and hang out with me at the late night at the when I worked overnight and he used to tell me, I want to introduce you to Bam Bam. And I thought he meant Terry Gordy. <clears throat> and then they had this thing going on at the Meadowlands called pro wrestling USA, where they mixed the NWA and the AWA around 1985 or so. Right. And I was a little bit into uh, training to be a wrestler. And I went there and I went with the road warriors. It was me and Hawk and animal in 1985 and Sergeant Slaughter, because we were all really good friends in those days. And um, uh, Scott was doing, Bigelow, was doing ring crew for Larry Sharp, who they rented his ring for that night. And I helped do the ring crew that night, and Scott and I became pretty inseparable after that. Definitely and was, um, for many years, I handled all of his bookings. So if somebody wanted to, uh, if another promoter wanted to book Scott, and Scott didn't want to talk to them, I would take the booking. And I would then pass it on to Scott. And I didn't take any money for it. But in return, Scott worked for me for nothing. He refused to take pay from me. Refused to. Yeah. 
you know. How you doing, a hot gamer woman? But he had a rough time at the end. I knew. I'm, remember, he lost all that weight. Yeah, and, what, what uh, he was what, down. He was down to like two hundred. No, he was. He was actually like he looked like he was working out. Yeah, no, uh, well, he, he was down to like two twenty five, right? Yeah, he wasn't working out. What What happened is, um, <coughs> you know, he had back surgery. Okay. And uh, he didn't handle it well. Yeah. And he lost a lot of weight. And then he vanished and this and that. And um, it, it, it was bad. He, he disappeared for about six months. He opened a sandwich shop. He came back. You know, he had a very messy situation with his wife. And I don't want to get into that because, you know, that's, you know. Yeah. But um, it, it, he had a very really rough time. He, he couldn't break away from the pain medicine. And you know there was a there was a show he worked for me, where he fell asleep at the gimmick table. Uh, there was a show. What, he, what was that Amazura? That was Amazura. You you want me to tell you why that happened? Sure. You want to tell him, Chung, or you want me to do that? That was that was that the day that was the day with the yeah. with the lollipops, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, him Shane and um, him Shane and Shane Douglas Douglas, Chris Candido. They all had um, morphine lollipops. Shane Douglas came in with like a little cooler with these morphine like lollipops, popsicles or whatever, and they were just going through them the whole the whole time. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't shock me. You know, Scott never missed one of my shows when he wasn't working for WCW or WWE, and um, he didn't show up to one of my shows. He fell asleep on the highway and got arrested, and that happened multiple times. Multiple times. The two times he no showed me, that's what happened. <coughs> but I mean, he was he was he was a great person. You know, I remember no, he was great to us. Yeah, yeah, he was he was super cool in the locker room, like even to you know, at that time I was greener than baby shit, you know. And the first time I ever met him, I just remember I was like, Oh shit, that's bad, bad bigelow. Yeah, when I was I introduced mean, myself and he and was he, he sat nice, next to us, he sat next yeah. to us and changed with us. Yeah, yeah. we don't I did. Um, I did a show at the the Hollywood Atrium. Yep. The and he's like, Frank, man, you need more famous guys on the show. And I'm I, and I'm like, Scott. I said, airfare is. It was a holiday weekend. I said, there's no getting guys here because of the holiday. <coughs> he went ahead and gives me his. Hey, he gave me his frequent flyer account, and he said, here, go go bring three people in. So he gave me almost a hundred thousand frequent flyer miles to fly guys in. You know, he wow. was just great. Scott was great. Um, Candido, you guys know how I feel about yeah. Candido. To me, Chris Candido is and was, is, and always will be the greatest in ring wrestler ever. It's just how I feel. People will disagree, but Chris was amazing. No, Chris was great. Chris was great. Um, he could work with anybody. Yeah. Yeah, Chris could work with anybody. Chris was fantastic. I spoke to Chris uh, the day he passed away. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I guess I, I probably shouldn't say what he said. But, um, you know, he made it very clear. Someone wants to kill him. <laughs> and someone's not taking care of him. Yeah, I wonder and, who that was. Yeah, I wonder who that was. And uh, But Chris was great. I, I knew Chris for many years. Chris was my co-host. On my uh, hotline, when I used to have I, the I local hotline. hotline back in the day. Yep, and <laughs> um, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll I'll tell you about Shane Douglas. I think I'm the only one that doesn't have a peep bad to say about Shane Douglas. And Shane's worked for me maybe 40, 50 times. He busted his butt every single time. He he never never ever did Chris. Let me tell you. Never did Candido, never did Shane Douglas, never did Bigelow ever say I don't want to lose to that guy. Never. I think, never. I think they're all great. They're, they're all great guys, yeah. man. I just, never. You know, that's just I, what we observed that day. Yeah. yeah I, that, no, that, absolutely. That, I, I, that, I, that I actually was you. disappointing to, oh, to see, you know. Very, very. But, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, when I, when I – when Shane Douglas went to work at Target, you remember that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he went to work at Target, that's when I said to myself, this is a real man. Yeah. Because to be on TV 
to have people know who you are <coughs> and to suck it up Excuse me. and to go work at Target so you can feed your family is what real men do. Yeah, yeah, 100%. So I yeah. could never say a bad thing about, uh, about Shane Douglas. I couldn't. Yeah. You know, I couldn't. You know, but you got to give me somebody hard. Uh, hey, I got I got a good one for you right here. All right, you ready? Yep. What about American this guy, giant. the American Giant? <laughs> Why does that sound familiar? The American? Oh, the big <laughs> schmuck! <laughs> what a moron! What now? For those of you who don't know who this guy is, you have to look up the American Giant. What is he? About seven feet tall. Oh, he's yeah. big. Fuck. He's, big he's about seven feet tall. He sorry no, than a big. He has no teeth. Okay. He's like a... Yeah, yeah. He makes me look like I, Shawn Michaels. I love the promos though. With that, oh, la promos, whoever, that, yeah. whoever that lady, whoever that lady is, those promos are great. Oh my god! Who well, who's you know, the black dude with the, the freight train? Two freight dudes. train. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, people would say, "Why would you bring these two in?" And you don't bring them in for their work quality. You bring them in for their promos. Entertainment factor. It's yeah. it's, it's funny. Like it's funny. Train, um, I mean, I, I think the guy's a complete imbecile. Freight train cuts that promo on Lindsay. Sn he's not even got nothing to do with Lindsay Snow, but he cuts <laughs> a promo. Cuts a promo how he's gonna he's gonna take her back to his hotel and put in her cat. Put in her in cat. cat. <laughs> I think. Listen, I think freight train is great. I couldn't say a bad thing about. He's him. a nice think, guy. Yeah, he's a nice has, guy. I think the American Giant's an idiot, though. I got I another one for you. Yeah, I think he's an idiot and a moron. Memories of Mike V, a.k.a. Psycho Sam Dudley. All right. Do we know where he is? Nope. Hopefully dead. Okay. <laughs> Fuck him. All right. I'm going to listen. I want, I want to tell everybody what I'm telling everybody is my opinion. Okay. I'm going to mm -hmm. tell everybody my opinion. And it's I, I have nothing <laughs> to back it up. Okay. Uh, well, I do. I mean, I, I have first-hand knowledge. Okay. Um, I don't know how he didn't drop dead. You want to know what I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something, okay? Yeah, of course. I've never spoken about this. I've always kept my mouth shut, okay? Bubba Ray Dudley hates my guts. He hates me because Bubba you Ray, brought in that guy. No, Bubba Ray <laughs> Dudley despises me. He hates me. We now listen to this. Up until the day we met, we never met. If that makes sense to you, okay. Um, I'm going to pick an imaginary year, okay? Let's say the first time I met Bubba Ray Dudley was, I don't know, uh, let's say 2005 was the first time I met him, okay? That's an imaginary year, okay? For, no, probably later than that, but let's say 2010 was the first time I met him, only time I met him. I'm getting phone calls from Rob Feinstein. I'm getting phone calls from Raven. I'm having people in my gym tell me, Bubba Ray Dudley hates you and he wants to kill you. Okay? Because you, I, 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 because you said bad things about his family. You said bad things about this one. You said bad things about that one. How dare you talk bad about Psycho Sam Dudley. Okay. So... Now the, so <laughs> And, I, and, I, and I'm telling this guy, what the hell are you talking about? He calls on the phone at the Chris Candido Memorial Show. He says, I'm on my way there to beat you up. Said, All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I go. I spend the whole time in the parking lot waiting. Now, now was it really him or was it somebody? No, no it, was really, it was really him. But here's the story. <clears throat> and I've for years, I kept saying, I want to be able to stand in front of him and explain to him, I'm not the guy. You're hey, what happened is this, okay? Psycho Sam Dudley, Michael Vartanian, was with Alex one day. Right. Big Dick Dudley. Mm -hmm. And they were acting stupid and they were playing a joke. And Vartanian was telling people he was me. Yeah. There we go. And Michael Vartanian was telling, saying bad stuff. I, I found this out years later because I knew Bubba Ray Dudley's sister from my gym. And a very nice girl. We always got along really, really well. And 
I got very sick one time. Um, I had what's called the TIA stroke. And I was out of the gym for about six months with this. When I went back to the gym, his sister told me to go F myself. And, and I looked at her. I said, why? She, you said bad things about my brother, uh, about my um, some of her family. I said, I don't know any of your family. I said, why would I say anything like that? And I explained the story to her, and, and I think she understood. And then this other guy that worked in the gym, he says to me, I heard this story that you said this. He said, never, ever. You know, never would I say anything because I didn't even know him. Right, right. You know, I didn't know the guy. And um, it was really crazy. And then I found out sometime later that uh, Vartanian was going up to people and saying bad stuff about Bubba Ray Dudley. And he was saying he, he was Frank Goodman. He was actually saying he was me. And I was at an audition for a Coors Light commercial or Bud Light commercial. And Bubba Ray Dudley was there. And I walked up to him and I said, can you know, he said, hey, what's going on? I said, oh, nothing. I said, can we talk for a minute? And he's like, sure. And he said, what's your name? I said, Frank. He said, Frank what? I said, Frank Goodman. He says, go F yourself. <laughs> and I said, I'm not the guy you think. I said, I'm trying to tell him that somebody else was saying they were me. Yeah. And it, it, it really, even up to this day, it bothers me. And I'm going to tell you why. Since I've been running shows in Florida, 90% of the indie guys I use are trained by him. Right. Yeah. And he, he, his training has helped my Florida shows so much. I've always wanted to say to him, you know, be able to have the chance to say, I'm not the guy. You got the wrong guy. You're, you hate the wrong guy. You know? And never, never, ever do I do that. I never say to somebody, hey, you know, but I'm not the guy. I'll talk bad about anybody. Yeah. You know, and I feel bad. My kids like, like uh, Dylan likes to watch him on TV. And I'm like, yeah, you can't watch him. He hates you. He hates your father. <laughs> you know, but I like him. I think he's a cool, I think he's, he's my type of guy. Even though everybody hates this guy. I don't. Yeah. I like him. I like him. All hey, right. I got so somebody you, for you. But uh, hold on. Vartanian, okay? It's very yeah. important, okay? There's a correlation of all the people who drop dead and Michael Vartanian. I don't know what it is, but it just... I mean, everybody who gets sick and something bad happens when it's related to drugs, he was always there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying the guy had anything to do with anything because I don't know. I know nothing about uh, drugs. Right. Somebody wrote, why would somebody do that? Oh, listen, because they were you acting like. Shit. Yeah, because he's, <laughs> that's what he is. He is. He's, a, he's, that, a, he's a piece of garbage. And, you know, I remember when, you know, Big Dick Dudley came over my house and he, he said to me, Oh man, I think I got some bad crap. And I'm like, well, where'd you buy it from? Oh, from you know who. And Jerry, um, Jerry the Wall. Jerry said to me, hmm. he goes, Yeah, I'm gonna go to Japan. He goes, You got Michael Vartanian's phone number? I said, No. You wanna know something? Uh, so <laughs> funny you say that because I was just listening to another podcast from one Queen of we. Queen Wee's podcast, and there were to him and uh Reno, Reno were talking about it, and Reno to this day, believes just incredible was the one that gave the wall the stuff. But you telling me? Oh, I could tell you that. I, listen, I can't tell you that he's ever given stuff to anybody because I've never, I've never. I mean, no, but I'm just, I'm just I'm saying he's he yeah. asking for that guy's I'm, number. Right, I'm anti drugs. Right. So I'm, I'm, I, I, I want nothing to do with drugs. I never have. But I, I think because I was a bodybuilder, I think Jerry the Wall thought that I was a steroid guy as was so many guys. And he, he was very direct. He's like, Hey, you know, I, 
they say that that's where people get their stuff from, from him. Mm-hmm. And I, I refused to give him the phone number, you know? And then yeah. Jerry passed away that week. Yep. yep. He passed away that week. Um, okay. How about Jimmy Snooker and his cronies, the Metal Maniac, the Strangler, and his jabroni son, uh, what was his name again? Deuce. <laughs> Uh, oh, solo, solo, yeah. He blocked me on Facebook because I wouldn't book him anymore. Yeah, yeah, Brandy, I do have strong feelings about that guy. He's a piece you of You know, shit. Um, listen, Snooker, Snook has worked, Snook has worked on my shows. Uh, I don't know. I want to say three hundred plus times. Um, I got to take the Superfly like three or four times. He broke my forearm once. Uh, actually, this one. Um, I am the one who booked Jimmy Snooker on Nitro. I got him the booking. Uh, I handled Jimmy's bookings for a long time. I love Jimmy. Um, Jimmy's awesome. Yeah, I mean, Jimmy's the one guy you could wrestle and you would not feel anything. You really wouldn't. You feel a splash. I, I only did that one time where where I he said I, I, was, I was positioned wrong. I know he used to come down heavy on that splash. Yeah, he did, but he was pretty okay with me. On it. But, it was really the elbow. Uh, Jimmy was fantastic. Jimmy was awesome. Let me tell you something, Frank. Like, for me, Jimmy Snuka and Tonga, when you, you bring those guys in, to me, that's a big piece of my childhood. Like oh, when me too. Ta- like, Tonga coming in to the, was it the last show we did? Two shows ago. I wanted to, when I saw him, like, like that was the first time I saw him, like, in person. I almost got tears in my eyes because that was the, one of the guys I look up to growing up because growing up, he was the only guy I could relate to. He's dark like me. He had the Afro. I had, I had a little yep. kid running around with an Afro. So <laughs> that's, yeah, that's, no, that's, I, I, I get it. You know, um, I, I've known Jimmy since uh, the mid eighties and uh, Jimmy was amazing. I mean, he did things for me on my shows that I, I you wouldn't believe. You know, you guys know because you've been around the Indies a long time. Yeah. Uh, a typical, you know, you take a guy like Snooker, you put him on an indie show. Five he's minutes. Gonna, minutes. He's going to give you five <laughs> minutes. He's going to give you a leapfrog. <clears throat> he's going to do the, the Chop. chops. And he'll give you, sometimes he'll give you a second rope superfly. Okay. On my shows, Jimmy would bleed. Mm-hmm. Jimmy would do 40-minute matches. Jimmy wanted to be a heel. He, he wore a he black the goatee. The, and yeah, a right. yeah. Jimmy did the superfly in one match versus Big Dick Dudley. The, Alex's last match, by the way. He did three superflies in that match. He did one off the top rope outside the ring through a table. Through a table. Yep, then he, br- he did brought Alex and he did two more in the ring. Broke Alex's forearm, elbow. Alex never wrestled again. Wow. Yeah. Um, Metal Maniac. I mean, uh, Jeff was my tag team partner. Jeff yeah. and I are on very, very good terms right now. You, got, um, you, got, you guys probably had the same amount of good matches, right? Jeff had Frank had, had, I think Jeff had better Jeff, Listen, I was good for five matches out of my 4,000. He was probably good for two. No. So listen, <laughs> if, if the Metal Maniac was in, was in the 80s, he could have been a WWE star in the 80s. He was a classic 80s type guy. Yeah. He was. Yeah. But let me tell you some funny stories here. So I'm in Hawaii 20, 25 years ago. And I'm walking with my wife. And we're like, you know, Jeff always talks about this restaurant in Hawaii. We were passing a place called uh, Fatty's. Fatty's Chinese food. And while my wife and I are walking, we're saying to ourselves... This is the place Jeff talked about. All of a sudden, I look in the middle of the street. 300-pound Jeff is riding in the middle of the street on a little moped. Okay? <laughs> flash, flash, flash forward a couple years later. I'm laying on the beach. Did and this guy, guy walks up to me. Uh, oh, my God. How do I forget his name? You guys know I've had a lot of concussions. Something that I forget. Um Rocky Ikea. You know Rocky Ikea is? No. Okay. Rocky I okay. But Rocky is that Prince Ikea from WCW. Um similar. They they're, they're okay. all related. 
<laughs> but um, Ro- Rocky was a big wrestling star. You talking about Curtis, King Curtis, I can Not King Curtis. Okay. King Curtis owned it's the probably chair. probably related to him, too. King Curtis owned the chair concession on uh, Waikiki Beach. He used to rent the chairs. Um, no, Rocky has the um, – I'm sure it's Ikea. I'm pretty sure it's Rocky Ikea. He, has, he used to have a, a, a catamaran that you rent on Waikiki Beach. And he comes up to me, goes, you're the mask maniac, right? I'm like, yeah. He goes, you know that Jeff Miller? I'm like, absolutely. He did this, he did it. All of a sudden, I got 20 people coming up to me on the beach telling me stories about Jeff. Jeez. It's the craziest thing. He's le- If you think I'm legendary, Jeff could blow me away. <laughs> you know? he's he's Jeff's a piece of work. But he knows the business. He knows what it is. Yeah, yeah. You know, he knows what this business is about, you know. But uh, the son, you know, Jimmy used to tell me that was his son. Uh, you know, I mean, I, yeah, so. you know, I mean, you know, he used to bring another girl to the shows and tell me it was his daughter. Yeah, that was his daughter, Liana. Liana was a great, great girl. And what happened to her? She went, well, she, mama, I guess it was, she went back to school. So she was, uh, she went to BYU Hawaii and she was going to finish her degree. Uh, so I used to talk to her a lot. She was a great, great girl. That's, yeah. that's she's the oldest sister. She was so, great. Yeah, she's but, their oldest sister. To, yes, uh, Snook, yes, Snook is, and 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 uh, the other kid. Yes, but Snooker's son had his first match for me. Yeah, it was for you. And, he, yeah, for, for me. Yeah, for of course, matches. they they all forget that, you know. Yeah. And um, garbage. Yeah, Stryker had his first match for me. A lot of people did. And uh, but uh, Jimmy, uh, <laughs> teamed, <laughs> he teamed with he his too. first show. You did. <laughs> me and Stryker teamed up. That's right. That's right. Yeah. At the Hollywood. Where's the Boogie Night? Atrium. At, at the Hollywood Atrium. 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 That's right. But he was he the original. Called, he wasn't uh, called Stryker. He was Hydro. And Hydro. I was Low Rider, and we were the Low Lunatics. That's right. Wow. Yep. <clears throat> so who else we got? Yeah, um, damn, I'm trying to think now. Who's another? Well, I, I have somebody here asking about the wrestling mime. Wacky Eric Adams asking about the wrestling mime. You remember that guy? I don't no. know who the hell that is. I have no clue. Neither do I. What about um, Prince Nana? Prince nah, I mean, wants to know. <laughs> Nana. The tooth. Well, the tooth. I lost. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Was Nana's first match for me? Or I, I don't know. No, no. He's, he, no nah, he, nah, he wrestled he, before. He's for a bit. Um, I mean, Nana's great. Nana's you know, awesome. I mean. Nana worked for me a lot. Um, Nana and I, we had this little, this little bond. You know, we just really got along really, really well. Um, you know, he dealt with a lot of racism that I had to see myself. You know, he worked for me on one of my shows, and he was waiting for a taxi cab. Oh, yeah, and, that was in the beach. Yeah, and people were calling the police on him. Yeah, that was at the beach. Him yeah, because he was black and... Um, him and Abunai. Abunai just vanished. He was all right. Yeah, um, yeah Abunai was cool. But you know, I don't know who, who's who's the awesome Anto One Hundred. He, he said he had his first match for you also. Oh, I don't know cool. who he is. So, but um, you know, Nana wrestled. Who are Ken, you? <laughs> Nana wrestled Ken Sweeney at uh, the uh, yeah, we, Knights we, of Columbus. We told this story before. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. we had we had Nana on too. the show. I mean, I Nana told the story. You told, yeah, you told the story. Nana told the story. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't <laughs> mind buying my tooth. What's know, so. what, who else, John? Who you got? Um, man, who's another character? How I'm trying to think of a good character. The equalizer and Thunderbolt. Oh, man. <laughs> well, the Equalizer again. Somebody who I liked. Uh, if I remember correctly, he he it might have owned a construction company or. Did very well with construction, and hang on. When who is the equalizer? The dude with the caps? Yeah. Yes. Okay. He was okay. He was one of Bigelow's very good friends. They would go hunting together, and uh, Paulie. Paulie was his name. And he died, right? I don't. I don't remember him passing away. I'm not saying he didn't. I don't remember it. But you know, he wasn't a very talented wrestler. No, but you know, he looked the part. He looked the part. But it was I, funny. I, thought he was, I used to call him the fake Mike Enos, remember? Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> I used you to know, be in the crowd. Like, <laughs> it was funny because Mike Penis. You know, you know how a vet will shoot on somebody? Yeah. He's shooting on people and he's a rookie. 
Yeah, he didn't know. Uh, no, and Manny gave him a beating. Yeah. All right, we're going to talk about Kid USA. I'm hijacking the show. Yeah, we're yeah, going to yeah. talk about Kid yeah. USA. Let's do it. Oh, oh Thunderbolt. Um, yeah, yeah. Great guy. Nice fella. Used to sell 50 tickets a show. Uh, but he was, um, oh, God. Do you want, I, I don't know. He died, too. Yeah, you know what? He Thunderbolt has died? Yeah. yeah, years ago. He was hanging he, out with Chris Candido. You know what? He wow. has children, so I'm going to skip over Thunderbolt. Because I remember he had children. I'm going to tell you a funny story about Dunderbolt. He's from Johnny's. So this guy character, one day I, I'm coming and we have a student show, and he shows up in full gimmick already. I go, what are you? I said, you drove? I know, yeah. I said, you drove full gimmick? He goes, yeah, well, when you're a star, you have to. You always got to be in star mode. I was like, all right, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's I'm not, just I, I remember the fucking <laughs> yeah <laughs> the promo picture yeah holding the watermelon you, yeah it's <laughs> you know hey. his his girlfriend told me how he made his money and because he had children at the time I, I I'm gonna skip over him so somebody asked a question do you see any of your kids going into wrestling no 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 Willie's twenty two he's six foot five. But no, Willie owns a successful photography business, and he's right. an artist. Um, now, some of you may find this to be a bit silly, what I'm going to say, but I don't really care. Uh, you if you've ever looked, it's at, still alive, by the okay. way. If you've ever looked at uh, the Tim videos, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of my son Dylan playing basketball. No, I've seen him on his TikTok. All right, you know how what a star he is, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He is a big. Do you know he has famous girls? Uh, writing him like crazy. I believe it. I believe he's a good looking yeah. kid. And but listen, for those of you who don't know, Dylan was the three time Orlando Ma Junior Orlando Magic MVP. Oh, Dylan, shit. yeah, Dylan played in a league that went up to eighteen year olds. When he was thirteen years old, he was the MVP. Oh wow! At uh, he's five eight now, but at the um, Amway Center, Dylan was seventeen of twenty from three. So. Um, what's his face? The uh, not Glenn Rice. I forget who it is. Uh, uh, Dylan plays with NBA players. He plays with NBA players weekly. Um, these guys seem to feel Dylan will be in the NBA one day. That'd be awesome. It, it's crazy because he's just to me. He's a little boy. Yeah, I but, still, I still um, gonna always look at him as both of them. I'm gonna always remember them. Yeah. And diapers running around the show. Yes, I know, I know, but uh, it's nuts. But I yeah. do want, I want to tell you some Kid USA stories. I don't know yeah. if you guys know these. Uh, Kid USA, known as Kid Onions, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I'd say it. Yeah. Um, we were running shows, uh, in the, in the 90s, we were running three to four shows a week at one point. Before you came along, Lou, yeah. we were running in New Jersey. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, sometimes Sunday, mm -hmm. in in Seagirt, New Jersey, at the Armory, in Howell, New Jersey, in Perth Amboy, in Bayonne, and we were running nonstop, and we're getting the thousand people every show. We're we're doing three to four thousand attendance each week, in three to four different shows, and there was a point where we did Kid USA versus Manny Fernandez. And um, somebody said the second best promoter in New York. Who's the I, best? I, I, I really, I would love to know who the best is, considering uh, I drew a thousand every show. Hold on, eight, I'm, eight. I'm wondering if this is if this person is saying that they that they are the second best. Oh, okay, seller. that's possible because I mean, that's the person that said that they had their first show for you, their, oh, their first okay, match okay. on your show. Also, I got you. That's but cool. they, you know. But but anyway, so. There was a point where I believe six, seven shows in a row, uh, Kid USA wrestled. Um, oh, is that Billy? How? Is that the, yeah, is that the, um, oh, I forget Billy's last name. Because my mind's not good. I wrestled Billy and Hal, if that's Billy. Um, anyway, Manny beat him up every show. I mean, brutally beat him up. And no, he he's beat not him up. Billy. He okay. He beat him up so bad, right? Mm. That Kid USA had to send his girlfriend in the building 
to look at the lineup sheet before he would come in. And he said he would not come in the building if he was going to face. Now, why was Manny, Manny beating them up again? Because Manny beat up everybody in the mid-90s. Manny was stiff. Right. You know, but there was something about Armand that rubbed Manny the wrong way. Maybe, and maybe it was the smell. It might have been. So, <laughs> so, so Armand says, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to come in and wrestle Manny. So we gave him Bill Eady. Who's and Bill will fuck you yeah, up too. Bill, Bill Eady, you know, the mass superstar in Demolition Acts, in the in the eighties and the nineties, he was as stiff as they came. Yes. Bill, Bill gave him the Manny beating. <laughs> he, he walked out there with black eyes. You know, and uh, I never knew why these guys wanted to pound on him so much. To this day, I don't know. <coughs> you know, I don't know. I can't read all this here. I know. He I know. He thinks he was the best, but uh, you made more money. But who is he? Hey, he won't. Uh, only thing he wrote was uh, how how well how well. I don't know. Well, I did write. I, I ran Hal like five or six times. Yeah. Um. Blue Eye Brandy said that uh, she wants your honest thoughts on the dead presidents. I wish you guys teamed up when we were in New York. You know? Um, my honest opinions? Um, you two are probably the only reason I want to come back and run shows. Because I feel horrible that you're finally champions. Um, Lou knows how I feel about him because... The day I met Lou, I made him champion, didn't I? Yeah. I mean, I made you champion the, the second day show, I... the next, the, the very next show. But you, yeah. you were, we put him in the title match, the first show. Right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Ver versus Mr. Puerto Rico, right, with his yeah. lazy nipple. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what, what about your thoughts on Mr. Puerto Rico? <laughs> and Ralph the new dad of my kid. Oh, <laughs> do you know he reached out on me on Facebook before I I got blocked for life from Facebook? Who's that? Uh, Ralph Mike Soto. No, okay. Ralph Soto, Mr. Puerto Rico. Um, I terrible worker, oh, terrible worker, horrendous. Yeah, terrible, terrible worker. Um, very nice guy. Oh yeah, he was a nice. But guy. you know, delusion is a dangerous thing. Yeah, he you know, thought he was good. Yeah, you know, as I said, I've had close to 4,000 matches, okay? The first two or three years I wrestled in the in the mid-90s, mid-80s, I'm sorry, 80, 85 to 87, I was all right. I could do everything. Uh, you know, I could do drop kicks, I could do sunset flips, I, arm drags, I did everything. Moonsault. Well, you were a regular Jim Cotter. Yeah, I was everything. But... Um, <laughs> It didn't, um, it didn't correlate to the people watching. Right. People felt I was boring. So I stopped being serious and started wrestling like a buffoon. Mm -hmm. And wrestling like a buffoon got me booked on thousands of um, <laughs> fair shows. Remember the fair shows, Lou? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you wrestle three or four times in one day on a fair. And being an idiot and having a stupid mouth and saying stupid things got me booked. One thing I was never is I was never delusional. You never heard me ever say I'm better than this one. I knew what I was. I was not a very good wrestler. You know, I was, I was a pretty good bodybuilder. You know, I had 13 shows. I never took steroids. I finished second seven times. I finished third six times. I got a handful of trophies for having the best arms in, in, in the shows. Um, I was a really good baseball player. I probably made a big mistake by not being a baseball player. But yeah, that, and, money and, and, would have been yeah, way but better. At, <laughs> yeah, but, but, you know, I was never delusional. I knew what I was. Mm -hmm. As a promoter, people don't like that I'm very outspoken. My job as a promoter is to do nothing but put asses in the seats. That's it. Of course, if I don't give a good show, people won't come back. But people used to say to me for years, oh, Frank, oh, with the ticket sellers. He couldn't sell a building with ticket, without ticket sellers. Listen, my job, no matter what, 
is to get people in the building. And if if Josh Dealey, right, is a, the hunchback freak, is a trained Forgot about that guy. <laughs> you know, he went to wrestling school. He went he to was the trained. House. You know, if this imbecile <clears throat> sells 20 tickets at 20, at, at 20 dollars each, that's four hundred dollars in my pocket, right? Yep. That also means twenty people are coming to my show that never would have come before. And that's my job. And that's people say, How did you have a thousand people a show? How'd you have eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand show? That's how. My job is to, to fill the buildings. I, I I won't listen to anybody. <clears throat> I am the greatest independent wrestling promoter ever. I out of eight hundred shows, over four hundred times I sat a thousand people. Before I started running shows in Florida, never did I seat under 500 except for the road warrior show where I booked that show with seven days notice and had 350 people. Other than that, before I came to Florida, I never had under 500 ever, ever. Once I started running Florida regular, then we had the big sellout crowds. Mm -hmm. You started but, backing them in. Yeah. But, but back to Ralph delusional, he thought he was great. And when you think you're great and you're not is when you hurt people. And nobody could ever say as bad as I was that I ever hurt anybody. Right. You know? Come on now. Give me somebody good. Um, okay. good. Well, I got somebody here asking. Uh, well, Eric Adams asked about Tim Arson. We already talked about Tim Arson. I talked oh, about okay. Timmy. Timmy was great. My, my internet was acting up before I had to basically jump out. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to see what else we got going on because I, I want to give people what they what they. What's Frank? About. Talk about the Ring of Honor anniversary show. Okay, I'll talk. I, again, I say this. Some people say I'm I'm full of crap. That's fine. If Frank Goodman doesn't exist, neither does Ring of Honor. It's it's that simple. If I don't exist, and if Jack Sabbath doesn't exist, you got to give Jack credit. Ring of Honor doesn't exist. Okay, nobody used the guys we used. Ring of Honor went ahead, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fantastic. You know, that, that's, I, I think it's great that, that Ring of Honor did that. I, I was the promoter on paper for the New York Ring of Honor shows and the upstate Ring of Honor shows. And when Ring of Honor did their anniversary show, I did a show the night before, and I had eight or 900 people in the building. Ring of Honor did a show the next day. They had half that. That's cool. They bust fans in. Now, the State Athletic Commission is very difficult. You know, really difficult. And uh, there's certain things you can't do. And they weren't allowed to have the riots. They did this riot. They had, you know, it was planned. You know, fans jumping over, but the fans were wrestlers and all that. But they had... They were supposed to clear it with me because I have to clear it with the State Athletic Commission. Right. They didn't. And I wound up getting in a lot of trouble. That was the beginning of me getting in serious trouble at my shows. It, it then led to balls uh, doing a pile driver or something on his wife. Was, and, was that the uh, was, was that uh, Ring of Honor uh, riot thing? Was that when um, Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe, Joe and the Army? Yeah. Oh, I don't like, remember. Choked on Neg choked on Negro's brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not even sure. <laughs> but what what happened is after that, the State Athletic Commission started really watching me, and um, I had to do everything super by the book. And you know, Balls uh, did this thing where. He was going to hit a fan, but it was really his wife. Nobody knew. And he pile-drived her. And I got served with papers at the next show because of what Balls did, which, which, led to, which was preceded by the Ring of Honor thing. Mm. And after that, I, I said, told Ring of Honor I really didn't want to do business with them again. And um, they made me a very big offer to drive to Buffalo uh, one more time after that. So I believe I drove up to Buffalo with Matt Stryker. And I got Matt on Ring of Honor. 
it was part of the condition. Pay me this, you striker. And uh, after that, I said, you know what? Good luck, guys. It's not really for me, you know? That's it. And that was when Feinstein was there, just so everybody yes. knows. Uh, so I got, my son has always enjoyed wrestling. My question is for you being the best promoter would be steps he needs to take to get into the business. Is this Andy? I is think this, it might be. Andy who? I think it might be Andy. Andy, uh, I can't say his last name, but his son is. Uh, he's the, he's the, his son is the one that we brought in the ring with us after we oh, won, we the, won belts. the belts. Oh, L listen, I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest, guys. I'm not a fan. I'm not a big fan of wrestling. I'm really not. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm not a huge fan of people trying to get their family in it. It's a dirty business. Um, I think one of the reasons we three oh. get along is because we're not dirty. Mm. You know, I, listen, I pay everybody in advance. I don't take drugs. I don't drink. I, 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 I try to make sure there's no drugs at my shows, but there's, there's very, very, very few people in this business that are not either lowlifes, degenerates, delusional, or drug addicts, or all of the same. And I would not advocate for my child to be in this business. Wow. So, Andy, you know. No, that's not, that's oh, not okay. Andy. And, oh. Andy uh, said he chimed in also. Okay. Well, who, whoever you are, mom or dad. You really want the future of your child. You want them being punched in the face by somebody who, you know, you really want your kid punched in the face for, for 10 bucks or for 20 bucks. Or maybe, maybe if they're a high price WWE superstar for 500 bucks, you know, because yeah. that's what you're talking about. You know, guys on the indies, guys don't get $10,000 for an indie show. And if they do, the promoter should be ashamed of himself. I wouldn't advocate anybody putting their family in this business. Right. You know, sometimes I wish I was never in this business. I'm glad for the money I made. I'm glad I got to live on the beach. You know? You but, Disney. Yeah, I mean, you know, I should have been a <laughs> baseball player. You know, I don't know what to tell you. I made a big mistake. By the way, Andy, how you doing? Tell the family we said hi. And these are not my glasses, just for the record. Are, 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 those, are those the Mrs. Maniac's glasses? Yeah, she doesn't even <laughs> wear glasses. I'm just messing with you, Frank. No, they are. They are. <laughs> um, man, I'm trying to think of Duke the Pitbull Snyder. Another oh, guy who reached out to me a couple of years ago. So um, he was entertaining, I've too. I've seen him on Jerry Springer. Yeah. Apparently he was a... A clan, a clan leader, and he's in love with a black woman. You know, I knew Duke for about, I want to say, 10, 15 years, right? Mm -hmm. And this whole story about him being a white supremacist, yeah, I never a, saw it. Did you? No, no. I don't believe for a minute but that Spring, this guy was Spring, really a, Spring is, Spring is a work. Yeah, but he really says that he was one. But, uh, again, we're talking the delusional thing. You know, I like mm -hmm. Duke. I think he's a nice man. I really do. Uh, he was a ticket seller, you know. Hey, Frank, if you let me have this match, I'll pay you for 50 tickets. Um, <coughs> but the the demands, you know, people used to say, how come he just vanished? Yeah. Because if you're he selling... afford to sell 50 tickets well, anymore. If you, you know, if you're selling 50 <laughs> tickets to be on a wrestling show, you generally don't make demands, you know? Like... Uh, you know, I, I demand to go 20 minutes. I demand to win this. I demand. Hey, come on. This is wrestling. What, what about the ticket selling title that you made? I had to. Rock Shaw begged and, me. And Rock Shaw, the omen. Rock Shaw, the what pimp you say florist. About him? The first time I met him, he told me that he was a pimp who worked in a florist. He, he, um, was. he was. He yeah. was. I got to tell you something. <laughs> I, I don't absolutely think true. I don't think there's too many. Rockshaw is in the top five of the people I love in this business. Rockshaw owed me money. I didn't see him for 10 years. He writes me one day. He says, hey, Frank, I want you to remind you I owe you $350. I'm having my girlfriend pay you today. And his girlfriend sent me the money. 
I love Rock Shaw. No, actually, I love him. I can't, listen, nope. is Rock Shaw the greatest wrestler in the world? No. No. Is Rock Shaw as good as me? No. Okay? And I'm not good. But is Rock Shaw a really good person and a man of his word? Yes. He's dedicated, and man. He's dedicated. He takes the business ser serious. He's not careless. People yeah. think he's careless in the ring. He's no, not no. careless. He, he would no. never. He he never wants to try and hurt anybody. No, he, he no. Won't, he won't do anything that he's never done. No, he's he's See. a really good person, and just like you two, until the day I stop wrestling, running shows, you guys and him are always on the shows. Like when somebody asked me how I felt about you two. Anytime I do a show, whether you can make it or not. You guys are always one of my first calls. Mm -hmm. You know, there were a couple of years you didn't because you guys were getting your new yeah. careers started and stuff. Yeah. But I, there will never be a show that I promote where you two and Rockshaw don't even have to ask me. You show up, you're on the shows. You know? That's it, you know. But give me, uh, come on. I, I, I want to trash them. I got somebody right here. Somebody asked about Alex Red. Oh, that's cool. They see, there we go. I know, there I, know we go. You, I know you love him. All right. I have to try to remember now because it's very hard to remember certain stuff. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so this guy comes to me. I knew this. I only remembered this because of private messages. I looked at an old private message. So about six, seven, eight years ago, this guy writes me, Alex Red. I'm training to be a wrestler. It's not going really well, but I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a singer. He goes, if I sell 100 tickets or whatever it was, I think it was 100, I don't remember. If I sell 100 tickets or 50 tickets or whatever, um, can we play at intermission to get publicity? I'm like, sure. Absolutely. 100 tickets, you know? fuck not. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm very clear with everybody. You got to pay me in full a month before the show. If you can't sell the tickets, you own the tickets. They're yours. Right. Uh, every week. Yeah, they're selling good. They're selling good. They're selling good. Uh, a month before the show, they're selling good. They're selling good. A week before the show, you know, come on. We're supposed to meet. You have the $2,000? I don't think it's fair you making me sell tickets. I said, what are you, an idiot? I said, you came to me and offered me to do it. And I'm making you? I said, get away from me, you idiot. I said, don't ever write me again. A couple of years go by. He reaches out to me. I'm the promoter of uh, shitty, shitty wrestling and wherever. And I'm the biggest promoter out here. The biggest promoter out here, right? He gets 50 people a show. Okay? He does buy one, get one free. Okay? Oh, you know, if I say anything incorrect, you tell me. Gets 50 people a show, does buy one, get one free, and he gives away the other half for free. You know? Like, all these people come to my show. How much? I said, 25 bucks a ticket. Alex Red lets us come for free. What's that? What do you want from me? So, <laughs> so this schmuck is like, hey, can we do something together? I'm like, what? He says, I'll tell you what. How about if I come and video your shows... And I'll do common color commentary for you. In return, I'll pay you this amount of money. And I want you to put two of my tag teams on the show. What are their uh, names? Yeah. Remember, was, you wrestled um, them. Um, nice yeah, nice yeah. kids. What the fuck were they called? Um, Brothers in Arms. Brothers, Brothers in Arms, arms. yes. But, but nice, nice kids. Yeah, yeah they, were, they were cool, dudes. But here's the thing. He paid me to put him on the show. So he's giving me all this money and he's just acting like an idiot. Actually, and then you, all, made, you made us put him over. Yeah, well, because he paid me for it. <laughs> I should have paid us. I should have paid you. Yeah. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so, you know, I'm getting irritated. I'm getting irritated. And each show he's promising me, Hey, I'm going to, I'll pay this guy to be on your show. I'll pay this guy to be on your show. And in the meantime, I have guys on my shows like Shane Douglas and Justin Credible and all those guys. And he's 
using this stupid, pathetic, moronic schmuck photographer to sneak in the locker room oh, during the show. I remember that. I remember yeah, that, that little turd photographer, right? Yeah, that he's using this up. guy to go into the locker room and cut promos. Right now, the wrestlers think they're cutting promos from my show. He gets Shane Douglas to cut a promo, making Shane think that he's cutting it for me, but he's cutting it for this shitty wrestling show of his, wherever it is. And and I said to him, I said, "You can't do that crap." Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I would never do that. In the meantime, I'm talking to Shane. And like a month later, he's all he's paying guys double. Would anybody else pays? Like, you know what you, you know what that look, it, it's the wrestler's job to make as much money as humanly possible. Mm-hmm. It is. I, I, look, if I pay Shane Douglas 500 bucks and he gets a thousand from this guy, that's great for Shane, mm-hmm. but it ruins it for other promoters. Yeah. You know, it, it does. You pay a guy 500, a thousand bucks and everybody else is paying him 500. He's overpaying everybody because he's a mark. And he just wants to be friends with the wrestlers, right? So this guy tells me, he goes, listen, I'm going to video your show, okay? I'm going to do color commentary, and I'm paying four wrestlers to be on your next show. He contacts me three days before the show, right? Oh, I have an opportunity to be a security guard at AEW, so I can't come. I said, wait a minute. It's three days before the show. You're supposed to be doing photography, mm-hmm. color commentary, and you're paying guys to be on my show because you're a mark. And you're going to go be a bigger mark and not show up to my show so you can be a security guard and ring crew? And you're a wrestling promoter? Mm-hmm. So I just basically lose it, right? Yeah. So the guy... Writes yeah, something. that's what he's talking about, Andy. He writes something really nasty to me online. Now, remember something. Let's be clear here, okay? Let's be extremely clear, okay? I'm 268 pounds. I got 20-something inch arms. I act like an idiot in the wrestling ring because that's my job. The fact Do that again, is- Frank. Do that again. There we go. Can you see it? Yeah, no. yeah. There we go. Okay, there, there we go. Okay. The fact of the matter is... I can rip his arm out of the socket and beat him with it. And you guys know me. Very nonviolent. Never do you hear me say, I'll beat this one up, I'll beat this one up. I never talk that way. I never behave that way. But one thing about me, I can really fight. It just happens to be a gift. When you grow up getting tied to a car at 10 years old and dragged down the street, you kind of learn how to fight. You know? And... I had a bad shoulder surgery, you guys remember, mm-hmm. and I sure. went from 260 down to about 200, and I was kind of sickly looking, and the only time he met me was when I was sickly looking, and oh, he, so mouthed, that's why he, wanted to fight you. he mouthed off to me on the internet thinking I'm still sickly looking, not knowing I'm not sickly looking, I'm pretty healthy, you know, I mean, I... I I'm 56 years old. I can incline press 500 pounds and I can flat bench 600 pounds. Doesn't make me a great fighter, even though I am. And um, I lost it and I called him up and I said, who the f- do you think you're talking to? Really? I said, who do you think you're talking to? You know, and, and all of a sudden he starts crying on the telephone, crying. Oh, I'm thinking of killing myself. I want to kill myself. I'm suicidal. I want to kill myself. I don't know why I opened my mouth to you. I have something wrong with me. I'm going to move away. Oh, I want to. I'm so depressed. It's horrible. I've never made any money. That's just all he's, what he's telling me. I've never made a dime on wrestling shows. I don't run wrestling shows to make money. I run wrestling shows uh, because I like wrestling. And I I just lost it. I said, you know what? I said, you're a stupid idiot. I said, you're bad for the business. And don't ever contact me again. You know? He then went ahead and I booked like four or five shows in advance. 
He went ahead and booked all four dates that I had. He contacted the Pope, right? Not the real Pope, but the Pope. He contacted the Pope. He contacted... Um, he uses West Briscoe, I know. West Briscoe. He, con he contacted all the guys who were working for me. And he's given these guys like double what I give them. And he's given them jobs. Like he tells the Pope, you're going to be my locker room guy. He tells Briscoe, well, you're going to, you're going to run the whole show. And he's, he's making these guys seem like all these things are, you know, it, it, I can't stand them. He is what's bad for wrestling. And then people say to me, why do you care if he gets 15 people and you get six, 700 in Florida? And I'm going to tell you why. And maybe you guys will understand this now. Let's say this little turd burglar, right? Alex Red. Let's say turd boy. He has Shane Douglas and he had Just Incredible. He had every guy that I had on my show. He books on his show. That's what he did that time. Mm -hmm. He put the Sandman on. Sabu. He put F Sabu on. Puts everybody that I put on my show. Sandman fucking boxed like a finish to his heavyweight title match. Yeah, yeah that but just because, yeah, that because was horrible. That, you ever see Hack act like that at my show? <sighs> no, no, not I that mean, bad. Not I that bad. No, well, no. I'll be honest with you. You, you wouldn't put Hack in a situation where the world title's on the line, right? But Hack was our <laughs> champion. Was he? You bet he was. Because <sighs> in the ring, Hack doesn't behave that way at my shows. Okay, I'm going to tell you about Hack. Hack owed me five hundred bucks. From an airline ticket, I bought him. He went to jail. I bought him an airline ticket. He got arrested. He went to jail. Five oh, years sorry. later, I said, hey, Hack, I want to use you on the show. He's like, you're still in Florida? I said, yeah. He says, listen. He goes, "You, I owe you money. He goes, I'll get myself to the show. Okay? Hack flew himself at his cost to my show in Florida. Okay? Hack may drink at my shows. He may act stupid, but he gave me 30, 40 minute Raven matches. You know, he knew that that guy, Alex was a mark and he knew what he can get away with. And that's what he did. But let me explain this to you. So this guy uses Sabu and just incredible and Sandman, everybody that I'm using on the show a week before a week after him. Right. And people say, well, why do you get upset that he only gets 15, 20 paid, right? Easy. Because when one of those 15 or 20 paid goes to his god-awful show and sees how bad it is, when they see a poster for my show with the same names, you know what they're going to say? Oh, it's going to be the same shit show that I just saw. And that's why it's important that – Promoters do a good show. I want all promoters to do well. I like making fun of Jack. I love making fun of Jack. I made a career of making fun of Jack. But I never wanted Jack to do bad. Because if Jack did bad, using the same talent I do, it reflects on my show. You want to know something? I don't not ever think Jack did bad. I just think Jack... Uh... No, Jack never did. Jack did not do bad shows. No. Jack did poor... Uh, Poor paid attendance. Okay, I'm not saying bad attendance. I'm saying poor paid attendance. Jack, at the beginning, was too interested in saying, Hi, I'm Jack. I have, uh, I'm a wrestling promoter. Hi, Jack. I jumped off the Elks Lodge balcony. Okay? Jack was too interested in being friends with the wrestlers. Once Jack matured... Mm -hmm. And grew out of that is when Jack said, all right, you know, I know something. I need to make money. And that's that's a fact. That's a fact. You know, listen, I like making fun of Jack with the bounce checks. You you know for a fact, Lou, and you can't say otherwise. Jack bounced hundreds of checks. Hundreds. I'll be Jack, honest made, you. Jack made good on his checks. I'll be honest with you, Frank. Uh, Jack never bounced nothing on me. Because you wouldn't take a check. Well, well no, he, he actually gave us a check. He gave us uh, checks. But, let me like make... two, but he paid us almost the same way you did ahead right. of time. But let me a explain. couple times, like, let he'd me be explain. like, hey, come to our store, come to my store, and 
you know, a week before the show. Hey, come right. to my store. But here look, goes here goes your your pay for the show. Well, let me let me explain this though. The reason I was always so passionate about it, and I like Jack. I've always liked Jack, is because it was my license. Yeah, yeah. and I had a bond, and it was my bond. And right. people were contacting the athletic commission that he wasn't paying them. So you know, not to mention to this day he still owes me money. Oh man! But it's okay. We you know it's it, it is what it is. It's not a lot, you know. Yeah. But back to this idiot. This guy is what's wrong with wrestling. Alex Red is exactly what's wrong with wrestling. Listen, if you, it's supposed to be a big deal to be a wrestler, isn't it? Yeah. Do you like it, Lou, that you trained and you've been a wrestler for 25 years? And do you like it that nobody's just little shit kids just walk in and become wrestlers? No, I don't like it. Okay. I don't like, I don't like the fuck out of me okay. Too, that run it's around. It's Every supposed, high spot in the book. Right. It's supposed to be a big deal to be a wrestling promoter. I'm not saying everybody has to seat 500 or 1,000 people. Okay? Wrestling promoters, if you seat 50 people a show, you have no business promoting wrestling shows. Okay? You don't. If you don't make a dime, it, it's, it's, it, there's no reason for it. A, a grown-up, you do something... To support your family. You know, you do something to make money. Okay? This imbecile in South Florida is a pizza delivery boy. Okay? He yes. He, de he doesn't have another job. He delivers pizza. <laughs> he works on tips. You know how I know that? Because he's told me that. And he writes it on Facebook every day day. He writes on Facebook every day how am I supposed to pay for the next wrestling show if you idiots are going to keep stiffing me on tips? Wow. All right. And, and, and listen, as I said with Shane Douglas, any job you get makes you somebody to be admired. If you have a job delivering pizza, you should be admired you have a job. You work at Target, you should be admired that you have a job working at Target. But don't play wrestling promoter when you can't pay everybody, when you can't pay your own bills. Yeah, it takes a whole – you want to look up to a wrestler. You want to look up to a promoter. It's supposed to be a big deal. You're not supposed to get your pizza delivered by a wrestling promoter. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. You know? I know it's America. You have the right to do whatever you want. But it reflects on the rest of the business. It reflects on the business. That's all. You know? Yeah. I you know, it's like you. How, how do you feel about a security guard playing policeman? You like it? Nope. You respect security guards, don't you? No, I, res I respect, but you don't all, respect all the ones law that enforcement, make believe. Kind of law enforcement, yeah. But you don't respect the ones that make believe they're police. Right. If you do a wrestling show and you got 15 people at the building, you're not a wrestling promoter. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm always Definitely right. I'm Jewish. We're always right. Hey. <laughs> that reminds me of the day when I first started working for you. I was asking you a question. You go, listen, if, if your name, your last name isn't Goldberg or Leibowitz, or then he goes, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, uh, I'll tell you a funny. I'll tell you a funny story with that. You know, I always joke. You know, my wife's Polynesian, and and yeah. you know she's a hundred percent Asian. My wife, and we're doing a live video about three years ago. We're married twenty eight years. Yeah, and she's standing right. Guapo next to in me. the building. What's up, Guap? Hey, Eddie. Uh, she's standing right next to me, and I probably had like three thousand people. We were doing a show in the Disney Group, and it's like. 3,000 live viewers. And we're talking, we're talking. And I look at her and I said, Kath, she goes, what? I said, you're not white. She goes, of course I'm white. I said, no, you're not. I'm married to you 28 years. You're not white. She goes, I'm white. I said, was your mom white? She goes, no. I said, is your dad white? She goes, no. I said, Kath, you're not white. You know? <laughs> It took me all these years to realize oh, I'm in an interracial marriage. 
<laughs> you know, my wife's a hundred percent Asian Polynesian. Oh man, you know, but I love everybody. I don't care. So Frank, yeah, what's what's the word? We got any news for USA Pro coming back? Well, a as I said before, the world wants to know. As I said, the uh, um. Bullshit. Sigmund. <laughs> As I said, I collect toys in case you didn't know. As I said the other day, uh, last time we did this, um, the only place I'm going to run shows is Darn where it. I own the food concession. And the building that we run, um, it's, it's, it's a big thing for us with the food. And just when the coronavirus started, there was a hurricane and the tornado hit the roof of the building and they have not repaired the roof of the building. So right now I'm at the mercy of the state of Florida because it's an armory. Right. You know, we ran a wrestling show at the um, Jewish center in um, your people. Yeah. Not far from my house. That's right. Oh, yeah, we did. And, um, and they didn't give us the food concession. And, you know, we make decent money on the tickets, but I mean, we need, we need Mrs. Goodman's burgers. Yeah. You, I mean, you know, when, when you run a wrestling show, if you have like five or 600 people, if that's all you get, you know, you're looking at three or $4,000 in food, right? You know, if that's what you get, if you get a thousand people, you're looking at a lot more. Mm -hmm. So you know, as I said, you know, it's not just about putting on a good show. It's about it's about making as much money. And um, Florida is not New York. I run New York. I, I, you know, I know I'll get a thousand people. But down here, you know, five, six, seven hundred people. I need the food concessions. Yeah, man. So uh, until that ceiling is fixed, the roof is fixed. You know. Memories of the Wrestling Vixens. <laughs> what was that? Why does that sound familiar? No, uh, it's not Missy Hyatt. Yeah, Tandy. Missy Hyatt, uh, Bobcat. Oh, was that that X-rated thing that they did? Yeah. 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 Man, hey, is, is Tammy still in jail? No, she got out. Did she? Yeah, she got out she'll a be, couple weeks ago. She'll be back. Man. Sooner than later. That's some rough stuff, you know? Yeah. That's rough stuff. So what else we got? What are these questions? You got you got AC egg rolls. Oh, he's a moron. What a gutless coward. <laughs> Ima can you imagine this? Imagine being such a gutless coward and being a wrestler. <laughs> right? I mean, think uh, of this. Think of this, Lou. I'm yeah. 56 years old. Really? Who's scared yeah. of a 56 year old man? Granted, I could like reach in his heart and pull his chest out. But I'm a 56-year-old man. I'm slow. I fart every time I stand up. And I really do. Every time I stand up, it's just I'm old. And he's terrified of me. You know? Jesus Christ. What a what a sniveling coward. How could you be a pro wrestler and a sniveling coward at the same time? Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's... I, wonder, I wonder what Guapo would have to say about him. Guapo loves that guy. I don't know. Hey, I, I'll tell you what. Since <laughs> you guys can't think of good names, how about I, I give you a couple? Go ahead. Give, why don't you give us the people that you hate the most? That, well, I that can't. I, there's not a lot. I'll tell you what. Here's one. I'm going to give you one. Just incredible. Okay? The belt. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> what? He forgot, he, he forgot his belt. He forgot his belt. And oh, that his pants guy. were falling off. So, he looked like a so, fucking joke. you know. PJ used to work for me all the time in New York, right? He just agreed. I and like in, in order to get a really good bet, he has to be against a friend of his. Like, you put him against balls, I was getting 30 minutes. You put him against Raven, I get 30, 40 minutes. Put him against D'Lo, 30, 40 minutes. You put him again, I put him against Slick Wagner Brown. It was the worst three minutes I ever saw in my life. What the hell? And um, everything was good. Everything was good. Everything was good. And he's like, uh, you know, hey, Frank, uh, I'm, you know, I'm really down on my luck. Can you pay me in advance? And uh, can you give me an airline ticket? I'm like, you know, PJ, I don't like flying guys. 
So I pay him in advance. I give him an airline ticket. <laughs> I just got that, by the okay. way. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I pay him in advance. I give him an airline ticket. Ten years later, 12 years later, 12 years later. Hey, Frank, can you use me? I'm like, PJ, I'm still waiting for you to get on the plane 12 years ago. And, oh, man, you know, I was just really effed up. It was a bad time in my life. I said, I'll tell you what. Uh, same thing happened with the Sandman. I said, get yourself to Florida. You know what he did? Got himself to Florida. He got himself to Florida. And you know how much he asked for? Half of what he used to get. Damn. And he bled all over the place. Now, I heard bad stories about him in the mixing around with fans and stuff. But I will tell you this. The guy's a man of his word. And he really does try hard. He, you know, I'm not, I'm not a fan of guys that take drugs. I'm not. I'm very, very anti-drugs. Okay? Right. The thing I like about PJ, he, he really does try. He's not one of these guys that say, that really want to be a messed up guy. Mm -hmm. He really doesn't want to be. And, you know, anybody that gets on an airplane at their own expense and makes good on a debt from 12 years ago, I'm good with him. You know, I'm really good with him. Um, I want to mention one other, uh, Raven. Okay. Uh, Raven was champion of USA Pro Wrestling, I think like six times. He gave me a 60-minute match versus Al Snow. He gave me a 45-minute match versus D'Lo Brown. Raven used to give us 30, 40, 50-minute matches every show. He was probably the greatest champion we ever had because of how hard he worked and never a problem, always reliable, fantastic guy. And if he wasn't an F up in his younger days, now you could disagree with me. You guys know the business really well too. If he wasn't a screw up, he is the one guy that could have been as big as Stone Cold. If he, you know, he got fired because he wouldn't get on air. He wouldn't wake up in the morning. Mm -hmm. That's why he wasn't in WWE anymore. Because, you know, they they want you to get on the plane at 9, 10 in the morning. He didn't want to get up. You know, but I got to tell you something. He, he has the greatest mind for wrestling. Nobody has the mind he has. He really could have been Stone Cold. He could have been that big. I hated that, that dude for a long time, Frank. Unt I, I bet you hated him until he was <laughs> older, and he probably sat with you, and you like him now, right? Well, it was uh, what it was the one of us. It was the show that we did with Goodman, right, Lou? Uh, for Frank, uh, I don't remember. I know we, I know we had a show. He was on the show. It was the Elks Lodge. I know that it was at the Elks. We we had we had some merch and. Uh, we asked you if it was cool to set it up on the table, and you were like, "Yeah, that's fine. Use that. Use the little table over there, or whatnot." We ended up setting that. We we had uh, some girls selling our merch at the table. Basically, the corner of the table. He comes over, and uh, so like I don't even remember exactly what happened. I know we wrestled. After our match was over, we we walk out there, and you know, we're mingling with the fans or whatnot. Walk over to the table and I, I, I see. It's a mission. Yeah, I see the girl sitting there. None of our merch is on the table. It's sitting on like a chair next to her. I'm like, what? What? Why is our merch there? She's like, oh, he, uh, he moved our. He just took it off the table and put it on the chair. I'm like, who? So she's like him. So I'm like, this dick face right here. And she's like, uh, I'm like. This fucking guy right here, <laughs> I'm like, man. Uh, so I, I told him straight up, man. I was fucking hot because I was like, come on, man. I told him I was like, I was like, dude, I were, you you were you were on TV two weeks ago. Now you're over here doing shitty indie shows with us. And come on, man, like, cause you cause you can't fucking hang anymore. You you want to be a fucking asshole? Like, remember where the fuck you came from? You know. Yeah, and, he, he, you know, I, I basically told him how I felt, and and he probably took it because he's not confrontational. Yeah, no, he like, sat there. He he sat there like like he used to up. in ECW in the fucking corner, and he just he just sat there, looked at me, and I'm like, 
I, I want to say it was probably like two years later, Mikey used them. Mikey and Wayne used them on a show. And we went out after the show to go have some beers. And Mikey's like, you know, Low Rider hates you. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, uh, he hates me? So he's like, yeah, man. So Mikey, Mikey basically broke the ice with us. And he, he actually apologized. And afterwards, we sat there. We talked a little bit. And, you know, because for me, man, I, I remember when I'd stay up till one one thirty in the morning watching ECW, Raven was one of my favorites. Yeah, he 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 grew up. Yeah, he he, was, he, he grew up. He was all right with me after that. <clears throat> you know, he, he he owned up to it. He said, "Hey, you know, I'm sorry about it, and it was what it was." You know. Yeah, he you didn't know, remember obviously, but <laughs> yeah, you know what I always used to say. You have to imagine what the the drop off mentally has to oh, be. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're on TV, you're the king of the world. Yeah, and then you're back to working, and you're in smelling buildings. Mm -hmm. yeah. You he, know. He, he went from ECW, WCW, WWE, and then he's back on Indies with, yeah. you know, nobodies, <laughs> and That's guys, that, and guys that were, and guys that were just like him that fell off the mountain, and now they're you know doing what they can for anywhere from two hundred bucks to five hundred bucks, you know. Right, right. Well, I'm gonna tell you something. He was different. <laughs> he would work for me for. I remember how I told you I used to book Bigelow. Yeah, if yeah. you go to Raven's website, it used to direct you to contact me. So I was his booking agent. So for me, he worked for me for, you know, what, you know. Hey, you have a, you have a but, creeper uh, behind you. Yeah. <laughs> and he, that's Giant Willie. Yeah, I saw him. He, he can't He's hide very well. crawling on the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I mean, I would book him out and he would get, I, I mean, I'm being honest. He would get thousands on the Indies thousands. Oh yeah. I believe you it. Know, he would get thousands. Um, but thank God I didn't have to pay that because I got him other bookings. Yeah. You know, I, be I believe that. Um, yeah, you got, you got somebody. Yeah. I'm reading. The angle Frank did uh, I like the angle Frank did with Saturn and Homicide. Yeah, you know, uh, let me tell you what disappointed me about that. Never in a million I years remember. did I think that Saturn <laughs> would blow up. Well, Frank, man, Homicide. You're you talking about girl, Homicide. Frank. I seen, I saw Homicide blow up Jerry Lynn, and Jerry Lynn is in phenomenal shape. Yeah, but but Perry blew up immediately. Immediately. Yeah. Hom homicide can go, man. Homicide yeah. can go. You could put a like he could blow Guido up, and you know yeah. Guido, Guido's a machine. Yeah, yeah. No, you're Randy, right. Randy, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you. You're right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, I, I I got a funny story. So <clears throat> every time we would run a wrestling show in New York, now I'm sure all of you have used the toilet, right? So you have At the toilet. Point. And you have the seat that you yeah. sit on, right? Yeah. So every wrestling show we're doing in New York, we're finding a pile. I'm not kidding you. Like this high. Like like Sigmund. As high as Sigmund on the seat. Like somebody is intentionally pooping and it's not going in the water. It's sitting on the seat. Yeah, hover. And we were calling him... What are we calling you? Is this dark fire? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Hold on. <laughs> so, I, I, if I, uh, wasn't this shitter? Maybe it was the shitter. It was, it was like the that. shitter. I remember that on, it? on the message board. Yes, it was on the message board. And there would be pictures. <laughs> and this is, we're talking about a year. And we can't figure it out. So, I'm at the, I'm at the Elks Lodge. I'm downstairs. I'm talking to my wife. And Perry Saturn comes out of the bathroom. And he comes out and he walks over to me and he's like, Frank, you got to go in there. <laughs> so I walk in the bathroom Ooh. and there's a pile of crap this high on the seat. <laughs> and I look in there and Randy's standing there. And I said to Randy, I said, um, I said, why? He looks at me, goes, it's what I do. 
<laughs> it was the craziest thing ever. <laughs> Anto, are you talking about Beef Wellington? Or Beef Henderson. 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 I yeah. hear he's a a roadie, a successful roadie for some famous rock and roll band. Good for him, man. You nice kid. Uh, what was the other kid's name? Rex, right? Or something yeah, my like nephew. That? That's your nephew. How's that he? Was your nephew. I have no contact with uh, my family. Oh man. Yeah. Wow. I. I mean, well, I had a fifty-five thousand dollar comic book collection that magically vanished. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yep. Wow. And it didn't magically just vanish. It. I mean, he, he took pieces by pieces by pieces and was selling them. Wow. Yeah. You know, I mean, from well, what I I'm hear, good. I think he's married with kids, but you know, I stay away from everybody. Man, it's tough, man. So, yeah. so Randy was the shitter, huh? Yes, he was. Absolutely. Hey, do you, Do you want to indulge on the uh, dark fire hot dog situation? Because I'm sure our fans would like to know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <clears throat> well, you know, Randy was he was ring crew. And I'm wrestling. And he was in the guardrails, walking around eating a hot dog. In the guardrails. You know, not where the fans are. He's walking inside the guardrails. And I flipped. And I dragged him in the ring. And, you know, I took the hot dog and... Uh, Shoved it up his ass. <laughs> and... um after that, he refused to keep his clothes on in the ring. He used to take his clothes off every show. <laughs> like, uh, the last time, did we talk about the Norman Smiley thing? Yeah. I mean, I, I, we're in Deer Park. And all of a sudden, I hear people screaming. And I hear Norman screaming, there's a naked man. Randy's standing on the rope, naked, fully erect. Fully erect, you know. Jesus Christ. <clears throat> then there was a time that you guys got the garbage pail, and what did I hold him by his feet or something and dumped him in the garbage? Or yeah, it was yeah. something like that. Wasn't you, it? you had to throw him in the ring. It was me. It was that's me, you, and Guap, right? Something. I, I believe it was me, me, Louie, and Guapo, <laughs> and we and we dragged him back. We threw to, him in the garbage. Yeah, then we, we threw him in the head. ring. Were you the other day? We shaved his head. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, it was rough. He loved it. A lot of things. Though. A lot of things happened to that guy. <laughs> Man, I'm. Let me tell you. You guys are going to say this is a Seinfeld story, but this is a true story. Okay. Um, I had a brand new car. My car was maybe a week old. You shit on your car? No, I, <laughs> I drove. Him, I I put him in the car and I drove him to do flyers. Uh huh. And the stink of the car was so bad. That we got rid of the car after a week. Oh shit! Yep, absolutely <laughs> true. Absolutely true. I remember once I called his house up because he was did supposed you, to meet. He's supposed to meet us to do flyers. Did you and throw the keys in the car with the windows open to see if somebody would take it? No, no, no. <laughs> no. So uh, I called up and his mom answered the phone, and um, I said, "Can I speak to Randy?" And not even a quarter of a second go by. She smacks him and says, get up and get your clothes on and get on the phone. And Randy gets on the phone. I said, Randy, are you in bed with your mother? And I don't remember his exact words, but he kind of admitted ah, it. You know? Shit. I remember when she was at Deer Park in the men's room offering guys to get a ride home. What? Yeah. Is this a true story or are you fucking Absolutely. Mother? Absolutely true. <laughs> Absolutely true. What the hell? Oh man! Absolutely true. Jesus Christ! Who's writing Brian Wittenstein? This is uh, Awesome Anto One Hundred. Who is that? We oh, don't know. He hasn't uh, dis divulged his name yet, but well, he he, so, he seems to know everybody. So Brian Wittenstein, he's doing awesome now. Yeah, Brian was that. like um, he's a good dude, man. Brian was like a thirteen-year-old kid. 
Yeah, and I don't know why he came to Gleason's to train his, with us. His mom used to drop him off at my shows, and so he can watch the wrestling shows, and then she'd go out and do whatever she does. <clears throat> and um, it got to the point where um, we would just drive him home with us, and his mom would pick him up from our house because I think he lived in Oceanside. We lived in Atlantic Beach, and as he got mm. older, he started helping me run the actual shows. He really did. Because, <clears throat> you know, one thing about me, I don't watch wrestling. He would tell me who he thought was good. And mm. he'd say, this guy's good, that guy's good, get this Bordell Walker guy. And um, I would I would use the guys he got. So, and, Yeah, and then he, um, he grew up, he went to college. Well, no, he came to Gleason's first. Came, well, all right. He, oh, that's how I met him. He goes to Gleason's. Pat Tan he pays Pat Tanaka to train him. Does that sound right? Yeah, Pat Tanaka was well, yeah, there. He, 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 he came paid, to Gleason's and he paid Pat Tanaka to train him, and Pat took his money, mm -hmm. and he came to me and said, "Can you get my money back?" And I, I wouldn't, I wasn't going to get involved. It wasn't my business. But Brian went on to work for TNA, and then he went to WWE and got in trouble for bashing TNA or something, some weird thing. No, no. I, I heard it was, uh, <clears throat> he was leaking like contract. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was something like that. Something like, like that. When they expire or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll tell you what else. Um, <clears throat> Brian would come up with such good match ideas that I don't know if you guys knew it. Do you guys remember that we were like the first indie company to be on pay-per-view. Mm. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. That I, we, it was the I pay-per-view, right? Well, even to this day, our matches air on Canadian pay-per-view. Um, USA Pro Wrestling matches have been on Canadian pay-per-view thanks to Aaron Weiss for about the last 20 plus years. And if sometimes I'll go to like FY video, whatever those videos are called. Yeah. And I'll look at the wrestling tapes and I'm like, holy crap, there are USA Pro Wrestling tapes for sale because um, Aaron Weiss went ahead and made these compilations mm. of USA Pro Wrestling stuff. And a lot of it was due to Brian's good ideas. You know, I never would have um, used AJ Styles and, you know, stuff like that. I mean, we were using those guys before anybody knew who they were, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Brian was yeah. a good kid. Now he's like an agent. Yeah, he's like an he's agent. like a Hollywood agent over there. He lives in California. Good for him, man. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Every once in a while, he reaches out, you know? Yeah, I, I talk to him every once in a while. He's a good kid, man. I always he is like a him. good kid. He's a good kid. His friend Charlie was a fuck boy, but he was a good <laughs> Who's that? That was the Hardy boy kid, right? Yeah, he had a friend that he came to Gleason's with. And his friend... Uh, I like, remember something about that. Yeah, they came to oh, Gleason. That's right. I do remember him. He, came, he used to come to the first few USA Pro shows. Yeah, the jackass. Like, I'm teaching him how to wrestle, and I'm working with the kid in the ring, and I was going to give him a boot. And as I go to throw the boot, he moves, and I, like, basically, I almost hyper extended my, my leg. And I, right there, I just beat the fuck out of him. And then he, he went around telling people that I, I, Abuse them and all this stuff. I was like, I didn't, I didn't abuse you. You didn't do what you were fucking told to do. Mm. But Brian, Brian, Brian was always good. Brian was always good. Brian was good. So, what other questions we got here? Um, oh yeah, I don't know. We're starting to run out. No more questions for you, Frankie. Everybody had enough of me. Yeah, <laughs> don't feel bad. I've had enough all of right. me. Starting to get late, you know. People yeah. probably starting to hit that bed before they got to go hit the work. Yeah, I've heard of people that go to work. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now everybody can go. We, to, all, uh, we all aspire Disney to be you. five days a week. Go we all aspire to be five you. days a week. I listen. We go every day. <laughs> I, I saw it when when but I does Disney um, have does Disney have you on the payroll? They should. They should. My my Facebook groups bring in so much money to Disney. You know, our groups have four or five hundred thousand active members. Yeah. You know, but that's all right. It's all right. You know, we go, we eat at Disney like five, six days a week, you know, 
But yeah. for us, because Disney is at our, we live at the back entrance of Magic Kingdom. So okay. for us, it's like if you guys go to your local restaurants, for us, I have to drive through Disney to go anywhere, you know? Xavier. Ah, Xavier was great. Yeah, was. Now, Xavier's, I think his first match was for me. No, he's, he, was, he was working in Connecticut and stuff was like he? that before. Yeah. Oh, that's, where, was, that's, where, that's where I met him. And I, met him yeah. I met him before he had wrestling gear. He was his wrestling first at match for me, he was 165 pounds. Maybe he might, he might have not even been that heavy. Yeah, no, he wrestled really the Metal heavy. Maniac because I didn't know he was good. Yeah, yeah, good times. Mm -hmm. Another one that just died out of nowhere, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then you got you got some Eric Adams asking about Jimmy Hustler. Listen, you know everybody loved Jimmy Hustler. Jimmy Hustler made up a lot of stories. Mm -hmm. You know? he, he did play a victim role. Yeah, he really did. He he made up a lot of stories. And, um, you know, I was very loyal to him. And yeah. he made up some stories about me when he started running his wrestling shows. His ABC wrestling. Yeah, when he started running his ABC wrestling shows, he made up some stories. And listen, with me, I'm very unforgiving. So I don't know what to say, you know. Yeah. You know, I was very good to Jimmy. I was the only one that, let, that used him. Mm-hmm. And I, remember you, I remember you asking me what I thought of him. I was like, he's a good worker. Yeah. Well, you lied. Thank you. No, he was a good worker. He was a decent worker. Yeah. He just he just wasn't marketable. He didn't have. Yeah. You know what? Like I said, I have a bad taste in my mouth. Yeah. When people make up stories, you know. I remember he told somebody that I didn't pay him, <laughs> and I wow. always like to stick to the same story. How do you pay somebody who pays you to be on the shows? Yep. You know, Jimmy, it was a standing thing. Jimmy paid me $200 to be on the shows. He didn't sell any tickets. Nobody would buy his tickets. Paid me 200 bucks to be on the shows. And then he told somebody, just, I'll, I'll say it, told somebody just like Slugger tells people. You know, another Slugger. fabricator. Well, another one that doesn't know the truth if it bit him in the butt, you know? Yeah. You know, Slugger too. Slugger's telling people, yeah, Goodman stiffed me. Goodman stiffed you. You paid me to be on the show. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? The money you handed me? I was supposed to turn around and hand it to you? No, Yo, yeah. Goodman better not tell people I sold tickets. I said, well, then you shouldn't have sold tickets. <laughs> you know? And I'll tell you the funny thing about him, Mr. Fabrication, right? Which one? Slugger. Okay. Um, Jason Knight and I went to some outdoor show in Astoria once. And when Jason and I went in, the promoter, who I can't remember who it was, he threw us out. He didn't want us there. Um, so, the pro so I, you know, I said, okay, well, we'll leave. And the promoter's like, yeah, but my security guard's going to throw you out. So Slugger comes over. And he's like, oh, you got to leave. I said, we'll leave in a minute. You know, he says, you got to leave now. I said, I said, I'll leave in one second. And I had a jet shirt on. And he looks at me, he goes, you like the Jets? I go, yeah. He goes, I play for the Jets. Yeah, he told everybody that shit. Yeah. I said, what are you? And I, I looked him in the face. I said, what are you San Diego, uh, San Diego State University. He told yeah. us, dude. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, I was always good to Slugger. Always. Always good. Always very nice. Very cordial to him. Until he writes on the internet that Frank Goodman didn't pay him. Yeah, I didn't pay him. Because he paid me to be on the show. Nobody wants to hear that. That always hurts, you know? That always hurts, you know? Oh, shit. Yeah, um, trying to think of it. who. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of any, any other uh, tremendous uh, people that would have been entertaining to talk about. I don't know. I mean, I, I love the WWE guys who, who, when they train people, they tell their students, uh, don't, let, don't uh, sell tickets for Frank Goodman. I'm like, why? Should I tell him you did? Wow. You know? Who the hell say, who said that? Oh, every single guy, every single <clears throat> wrestling teacher tells their students, don't sell tickets for Frank Goodman. You should be getting paid right away. No, you put rings up. You could either put rings up. You could sell tickets to your family and friends. You know, let me tell you something about a ticket seller. How 
how special a ticket seller is. Being a ticket seller is not anything to be embarrassed about. You know what it means? It means that 10 or 20 people are coming to see you. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and if you can sell 10 tickets to, to, for people to come see you, it makes you more valuable than somebody who's famous. I mean, it's, you know, it's a valuable thing. What's this? Is I don't Sean think the, the Mick, Mick is dead. Oh, he's is not dead. You're I, probably I don't Sean think he the is. Mick. <laughs> no, Sean actually is. I haven't seen him in a while on Facebook. No, Sean, Sean is so passionate. All he cares about again. is hockey. Uh, well, hockey's Sean, over, though. The Lightning won. I don't know. Sean loves hockey. Sean's <laughs> great. He really. I, I feel like I haven't seen him on uh, on the internet in a little bit. Well, so. He's not into he might, he might He might be uh, blocked again on Facebook. Yeah, he's, I know not, he, he's always in Facebook jail. Yeah, he's not into wrestling. You, know? you, you got somebody asking about Kevin Matthews? Really want to know? Sure. Yeah. All right. So it's not going to be nice, to be honest. Um, when I first met Kevin and Danny, okay, um, you know, I thought Danny was a goofy kid. Um. He was. Yeah, and and, <laughs> and I, I will tell you, Danny grew up to be a pretty good adult. He did. Danny grew up to be a pretty good adult. I agree. Um, I, I, I did not dislike Kevin Matthews in, in the slightest bit. In the slightest bit. I used to fool around with him. Uh, I believe you're not, Sean. Um, you know, I used to um, I used to make jokes when I was younger, I used to say Kevin Matthews looked like Jason Voorhees without the mask. Um, <laughs> but I didn't, I didn't mean anything um, by it. I thought he was, I, I thought he was a nice kid. He was, you know, um, I really had nothing bad to say about Kevin Matthews. I didn't. And I, I don't know what happened. And For no reason, I'm keeping my voice down because of my kids. For no reason, he started writing on the internet that my son was gay. When my son was maybe five years old. Really? Yeah. And I said it then and I'll say it now. I would beat the living hell out of him. I would leave nothing. I would leave nothing. Absolutely nothing. He can act tough when he hears this and walk around you know, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm six foot four, you know, Bill DeMott. Uh, uh, uh. He can walk around and say whatever he wants. I'm not Bill DeMott. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I want to think he would want to. But you see, here's the thing. If all he did is say to me, sorry, I would say, you know what? You just said something stupid. But the kid had 20 years to say sorry. And maybe to him, it was something that was just said in passing to be stupid. And maybe he doesn't give a second thought about it. Yeah. You know, that's possible. I do. I, I take it extremely serious. And I would hate to think what would happen if I, if it, I would, I would, it's something that's been bothering me for 20 years. And, you know, I hear what he's doing in New Jersey in the wrestling thing, his, his promotion. I, I don't know what he does there, but I heard it does well. Yeah, it's pretty good. And, and he's doing Alaska too and stuff. Yeah, like that. so he's doing, he seems like he's doing the right thing. Yeah. And maybe he grew up and maybe he matured. Yeah, he did grow up. But, and, and you know, he might say to himself, Watching this right now, he might say, oh, yeah, you know, I'm not scared of Frank. Uh, you know, he's 56 years old, like I said before. Oh, he's 56, and I'm I'm 35, and I am I have steroids and everything. And, and uh, I would leave nothing. It would take me five minutes. Actually, that's stupid. It would take me a minute. And most of it's because of the rage I have. All he needs to do is say, I said something really stupid. And because I always liked him. And that one thing he said about my child, about a child. Yeah, hey, that's tough, man. I, I don't know how I would feel yeah. about somebody saying some shit you know, about my kids. So. That one small thing 
has me every time I see his name, I'm really upset. You know, when I went to when I did the wrestling show in New York last year or two years ago, um, I actually kept saying to myself, I hope he shows up to the show. You know, and, and if he just walked up and said, I'm sorry, if he wrote me and said, I'm sorry, uh, if he wrote me and said, I don't remember saying it, and it was stupid. But it bothers me because I liked him. I really did. I used to say stupid things making fun of him. And that was probably the wrong thing to do. But it was just one of the boys making a joke. You know? I really, it bothers me because I thought he was an okay kid. You know? I think that's why it really bothers me. So as of right now, I think he's a low-life piece of shit. You know? That's, that's where I am right now with it, you know? Just telling the truth, you know? Hey. How come you don't ask me good stuff, like New Jack or anything? Good stuff. What is there to say New about Jack? New Jack? I got a lot of things to say about New Jack. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. <laughs> Fire off. Well, <laughs> for... The first like 20 shows he worked for me, we got along great. Mm. Really good. Really good. Even though every show he came to, he brought drama. Unbelievable drama. <laughs> but we always got along great. He would call up, we would just talk about nothing. You know? Mm -hmm. Just talk about, hey, Frank, I don't know why they called the show Good Times. They were never having good times. Oh, we always, always got along well. <laughs> Then comes to one of my Florida shows. And he started. He didn't like something that one of these kids did. And he hit the kid, but he hit the wrong kid. Mm. Like, I, I, I don't remember who it was, but. He's like, this kid disrespected the business. And he went and he hit the kid, but he hit the wrong guy. When I say kid, I'm, we're talking about 20-something. But right. he hit the wrong kid. Right there, me and him were like a little iffy. Because I'm like, Jack, you can't just do that. Then I go in the ring. I, I think it was the show after that. And I did my whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I hold... Mass Maniac spiel, mm. and I probably said the word penis 20 times. And he comes out, he comes in the locker room. I'm standing right at the door, and he's like, That's cheap heat, that's bull crap. But he's cursing at me. And and I said, In front of everybody, I think you guys were probably there. And mm. and uh, were you there that night? Yeah. And um, you know, yeah, I don't current. remember Jack being on on any shows with us down here. I remember oh. up in New York. Oh, he was on like here. he was on like twelve of my shows down here, and he, you know, he's cursing at me in front of everybody, and and I lost it, and and I'm like, who the fuck do you think you're talking to? I said, first off, this is my show. Second of all, we all say things to get cheap heat. Every single thing that we do is to get cheap heat. Shit, he said a lot do. of shit to get cheap heat. <laughs> yeah, I said that's what we do, mm -hmm. and and I'm sure there was just something else on his mind that had nothing to do with me, but I'm who he decided to pick at, and I just started yelling at him, and and he yelled at me, and we were screaming, and rather than stand there and continue screaming, he walks out to the ring, and he grabs a garbage pail, and he empties it all over the building. And I went out in front of all the fans and I'm yelling at him and he's yelling at me and I have to pick up all the crap because we don't have a cleaning crew. Right. So I pick up all the crap and I follow him into another room and it's just me and him. And we're not yelling, but we're talking firmly. And I'm like, you know, it's funny. I said, I'm your best friend. When you need a when you day. can't pay a bill, <laughs> when you want when to be paid in advance, day. oh Frank, don't go there. Oh Frank, don't go there. You know, 
and then and then he finally he 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 finally just said, "Listen, we're friends, and we're not going to talk about this anymore." And he didn't talk to me for about six months, and then he calls me, and he's like, "Well, he wrote on Facebook. He's like, how come I'm not on the show, the next poster show? It's because I'm black, right?" I'm like, yeah. Jack, you stopped calling me six months ago. <laughs> I said, we've done six shows since then. He goes, how come I'm not on the flyer? I said, because you're not booked. Because you're, yeah, you're not on the show. <laughs> he goes, well, he goes, can you put me on? I said, okay, I'll put you on the show. I put him on the show. He says he'll drive and all this other stuff. And um, he had another tantrum with me because I didn't get him on the flyer fast enough. And uh, I, oh, and he wanted me to send him money. And I didn't want to send him any more money. You know, yes. I mean, I'm going to say this. I never sent him money and he didn't come. He always came, always. But you know, there was a point, look, to be very honest, I don't have to work. You know, I don't have to work. Okay. But, like everybody else, th there was a time where when I was younger, I had, I really did. I had so much money that I, I, I probably never had to work another day in my life. Okay. I saved all my money. I used to own two gyms. I owned two personal training businesses. I owned three sporting goods stores and my wrestling shows did very well. And I really never had to work again. And I moved to Australia and we blew everything. And I came and, and you're talking about somebody who had a lot of money. And I came back to America in, in 2008. I had $40 in my pocket. Okay. Wow. And, and I had, and I was loaded. I had $40 in my pocket. My right arm. I don't know if you guys knew my right arm severed off the bone once. Um, somebody tripped, somebody jumped over a weight and tripped and fell on me in the gym. I remember my you telling that story. Yeah. My some, whole right some, arm. Some housewife, right? Yep. Some housewife. My right arm got rebuilt. So it cost me $167,000 in surgeries. Okay. I had $40 in the pocket, in my pocket. I never had a job in my life. Okay. I had to get a job as a bouncer. Okay. I took Scorpio with me. So me and him are bouncing in nightclubs. Okay. Me and Scorpio are fist fighting every night with 20 and he'll tell you this 20 and 30 guys a night. Me and Scorpio are fist fighting. Here I am in my 40s. Okay. I'm 43 years old. $40 in my pocket and I'm working as a bouncer. I don't have a pot to piss in. I have $8 in my pocket when Christmas came. Okay. We, we lost our house. We lost our car. We lost, because I moved out of the country. I didn't think I was ever coming back. Mm -hmm. I stumble into a gym. I become the general manager. I make enough money to run some wrestling shows. I start saving it, making them bigger. I'm making six figures at the, at the uh, gym. Next thing you know it, here I am. I never have to work again if I don't want to. But when I was struggling... And I was struggling, okay? Um, you know, it was, I mean, I just want you guys to understand, I had it bad. Never, ever, ever did I turn around and do, I, I just, I don't know. I just felt I wanted people to understand that I'm not just some guy who has a lot. You know, I had nothing. And yeah. then I started running the wrestling shows again. And he's begging me for money when I got $8 in the bank. And I just start running the shows again. And he's not understanding. When th he's writing me, he's like, uh, I can't pay my electric bill. I said, well, neither can I. You know? And at the time, I have him. I have Vito. I have... Who else was begging me for money all the time? 
can't remember. But these guys, they beg and beg and beg and beg for money. And Jack just didn't understand when somebody didn't have the money to send. Mm. You know, you're not booked on any shows, but you want me to advance your money. You know, and, and, and I got a wife, I got kids, I got to pay bills. Right. And right. it caused friction between me and him for probably two or three years. And then about six months ago, he started writing me to watch him on TV, you know, to watch his show of his on TV. Mm -hmm. And then we just started talking and he's like, isn't it good that we could talk to each other when it didn't involve wrestling anymore? You know? Mm -hmm. And uh, then I heard he passed away. Yeah. You know, then I heard he passed away. But I'm numb to all the guys dying. Yeah, it's it's becoming common now, right? Yeah, I mean. Over the years, it, it's crazy how we've uh, just seen so many people just expire, right? Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I mean, look, you can't do bad things to your body your whole life. Right. You know, I mean, look at me. I never took drugs. I never drank. I never smoked. Okay. I'm on 1500 milligrams of blood pressure medicine a day. I'm on a thousand milligrams of diabetes medicine a day. I have heart disease. I now have kidney issues because of the amount of pills I have to take. I've had 24 concussions because I suck as a wrestler. I need double hip, double back surgery. I need another shoulder surgery. I need two bicep surgeries. And my lower tricep needs to be operated on. And I need neck surgery because I have a break in my neck. So I have to turn the talk. Why don't you okay? just, uh, just become the bionic man and get a little... No way. I'm done with surgery. But, you know, you don't see me going and taking drugs and doing all that stuff. To me, it's weakness. All these people are weak. And I don't pity you uh, when, when people do stuff, you know? Yeah, I hear you. So I'm cold to it, you know? Hey, you're right. You're right. I'm always right because I'm Jewish. Remember, we said that before. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. You know? Yes. So anything else before we go? No, nah, that's about it, Frank. That's pretty much it, Frankie. All right. Next time, be organized. Oh, we always organize. You, you, you just gotta have a list of people. You just hijacked the show. Yeah. If I hijacked the show, you would know if I hijacked the show. Hey, no, but we wanted, to, we wanted to come up with some of the most obscure people. That's why. That's all right. Yeah, we, we kind of remember the uh, some of the numb nuts that you had. On Who's there. that? Who's he, struggling uh, struggle New Jersey? I don't know. No clue. But they're on. Yeah. Thank you well, for tuning in. Struggle yeah, well, hold New on. Jersey. Hold on. Before you thank everybody. Listen. These guys can't keep doing shows for 20 people, okay? You guys got to share this link. <coughs> so all you people watching, Miss Michelle, <laughs> listen, <laughs> Mega, and everybody else, share this link everywhere. Every bit of social media. Spam social media with these links, you know? I mean, we used to get four, five, six thousand 6,000 live viewers. These guys need to have thousands of viewers, not 20 people. You're all yeah. shameless. You're all, come on, spread the word. I feel like I'm in a Jack Sabbath show in here. Oh, Lord. Oh, wow. Cold <laughs> I'm kidding. Jack, I'm just kidding. I love you. I'm only fooling. <laughs> all right. Wait a Frank. minute. Did I tell you HR Puffin stuff? No. There he goes. <laughs> all right. I got to get out of here. This is Frank, uh, thank Frank. you. We do appreciate you for coming on. Oh, get out of here. It's okay. Hey, give know. the best give our best to your family. I will, Louie. As soon as guys, as soon as we know when we're gonna do another show, um, I'll let you guys know. We can always uh, we can always shoot the shit one day and just go get something to eat too. We're all in Florida. No. Oh, he, he's not hanging out. He he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't uh, out. mingle with people right now. He's I'm still famous. Of COVID. He's, he's Jewish. Remember, he just finished on as a Jewish. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm famous. You guys aren't. Hey, you know what? We can go to Portillo's. There we go. Is that the place you were talking about last time? Yeah. Oh my God, I gotta go to the bathroom. Oh my Let's God. Do it. Okay, Frankie, thank you, thank you for coming on. Hi, right, right, guys. Tell the family we say hi. Yeah, yeah. How do I turn this off? I got you. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, for real. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, thank you guys for tuning in today. Uh, always a great yeah, we, show we, with Frank. We, 
we ended up doing two hours and uh, 20 minutes on this one, guys. We do yeah. appreciate y'all for staying on for as long as y'all did. If some of y'all had to go early, uh, we understand. You know, it is late. We do know y'all have probably work tomorrow. So, <laughs> like Remember, Russell does. Universe, RussellUniverse.com. That, that, that guy got work tomorrow. I do have work in the morning. Uh, remember, uh, check out RussellUniverse.com. Check out his autograph signings he got coming up. Uh, he has merchandise, everything you need. That's your one-stop shop. Also, Sleeps.com. Check them out. Use our code MWA pod and get your 10% discount. And also, Health Vape. Healthy Vape Alternatives. They even got vitamin-infused vapes and everything you need there, too. And that you get a, you get a ten percent discount <laughs> also with them using MWA Pod. And yeah, shout out to Cicadas for doing our uh, awesome intro video. Uh, well, they do our music for our intro video. Thank you, and they do they also do the intro music for all of the uh, MWA podcast MWA podcast uh, shows. Uh, make sure y'all tune in to uh, Killing the Business with Angel. And uh, King Mega and Glenn Sexton. The Chris uh, sure, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure y'all tune in to um, uh, Get Funked with Alan Funk. We do appreciate y'all for doing all of that. And last but not least, Shooting the Shit Uncensored with our man Pierce Austin, the Ozzy podcast machine. You never know when one of his shows is going to pop off, so definitely check it out. Yeah, guys, uh, we do guys, follow that, yes. like, and subscribe. Tell your friends all about us. And if you like this show, go back and check out all the other shows. We had Bye, some good so thanks for watching, stuff. brother. And we, uh, we do appreciate y'all. Keep uh, tuning in weekly if y'all can. Thank y'all. Be safe. Peace. Take us out, y'all. Yeah, I'm trying to, bro. <laughs> <laughs>